How are you guys? Welcome to the Wolf Den podcast. I hope you are well. I hope you are good. I hope you are fed. I hope you're fat. I had I had like three burritos before this. Well, how are you? Yes. You know, like how right before the show, like we're supposed mm -hmm. to be like get in the zone, get like get ready, have all of our talking points lined up, and be ready to start the start the actual proceedings of the podcast. Yes, I'm and aware of the of of how us, it goes. And then all of a sudden, right before we go live, like uh, at least on Firefox, it does this. There's like a news article will pop up. You might be interested in. Of uh, Justin Timberlake, how he went from America's sweetheart to the America's bad boy, and you click I'm, on that and you I'm read all about how interested. now everybody hates Justin Timberlake. <laughs> I'm not at all interested in that at all, Will. I mean, I probably wouldn't have been, but I've seen both Britney Spears documentaries that the New York Times have put out, and I am very interested into seeing how this guy fell from grace. <laughs> Is that what it came up? I thought you were going to say there's like some breaking news or something. No, no, it's just about oh, how okay. you know. Now, now that everybody's on uh, Britney's side, and to an extent, uh, Janet Jackson's side, everyone's looking at Justin what's, like, "Hey, maybe you're the asshole." What's Janet Jackson's situation? Remember when he like uh, he ripped her her top off at the Super Bowl? Yeah, that's now his fault. Yeah, and everyone. Well, I mean, he's the one who did it. He is the one who did it. Yeah, but like, he got away scot free, whereas you know Janet had to go into hiding. That is, yeah, you're right. He did, Justice she did for Janet the, is what I'm saying. She did take the brunt or of the controversy. Jackson, if you're nasty. Um, this, uh, let's anyway, just talk, I, will let's be, just, I will be reading this the whole episode. Go let's on. Let's just talk about that today. Let's not. Let's not yeah, talk let's about, talk about Justin Black Friday Timberlake. deals. Let's just talk about Justin Timberlake. Uh, how he really screwed Janet Jackson during that one Super Bowl that happened a long time ago. Yeah, uh, I will let's be reading the rest of that article. By the way, but oh, awesome. after this, hello everyone. Welcome Hi to the show. guys! Today we've we do this every year. Uh, we yeah. have still a few days left until Black Friday. We're gonna talk about, I guess, I guess it's also Cyber Monday. We're gonna talk about all of the deals that you can get it's, in the gaming world. It's been Black Friday all month. I feel like mm -hmm. you know, like I haven't looked at any deals. Uh, I need to get a computer this weekend. Uh, I currently have sitting in my Amazon cart, uh, PlayStation Plus subscription for the oh, year because it's, yeah. uh, it's 40 bucks right now oh. instead of the usual 60. This is the time uh, to get all your subscription service stuff because those are usually yes. on sale. Yes. Mm -hmm. So uh, hopefully you'll find a few things here that might be worth it to you. There's going to be a whole lot of crap. Yes. But uh, there might be some things that you might be interested in for yourself. Not so much for other people. <laughs> This is going to be a yeah, purely it, selfish uh, Black Friday. But isn't that always the way of yeah, Black I, Friday? I I, yeah, I don't go shopping for other people. I save that till the very last minute. Yeah, anyway, I don't know what I'm getting anybody. Before we do all that, we got some notifications to read. For example, we have, I'm that guy. Thanks for being that guy. For, with the Prime <laughs> subscription. We got Luke Antone with the 26 months. Haven't been able to catch a stream in a while. Is Will still usually right? Yeah. Chat, what do you think? How's the chat? What's the yep. chat's yep. stance on that? Yeah, everyone's going to say yes. Uh, M. Jackson, thank you for the six months. Happy six months, Bob. I love it here. Thank you. I love that you're here. Yep, yep. Chats. The chat's on your side, Will. Of course. Anyway, uh, also, we got to talk about uh, our Spotify poll that we did, apparently. Yes. Uh, in case in case you are new to this podcast, I have been putting up polls on the Spotify page for this podcast. Uh, and last week, we talked about the Game Awards for 2021. And I asked you uh, which game should take home Game of the Year. And an overwhelming majority of you, 61%, said Metroid Dread. Wow, I wonder why. <laughs> oh, here's because we the... know the, this audience. And what I find funny oh. is that in second place with 22% uh, was insert game here was robbed. So okay. that means leads me to believe that aside from Metroid Dread, nobody else really cared about the other game of the year nominees. 
So guys, insert your game in the chat. What is the game that you yes. think? What was the game? I should have put that because you can also ask questions and like people leave comments. I should have put that in as well. If you put insert game was robbed, what game should have been? I'm I'm. Oh, Celia emailed me. <laughs> um, oh. What is the? Uh, I, I'm curious. I'm I'm surprised. Death Loop. I, I, we kept saying that it was between Metroid and Death Loop. Death Loop yeah. got four <laughs> percent. Uh, in third place was Ratchet and Clank. I believe that, and that surprise. Well, that surprises me because I, I thought that was a last year game. Like I thought it was so far back that like I'm. Pr I thought most people would have forgotten about it by now. Shovel Knight Pocket Dungeon is available for review. Ah, oh. very cool. You're excited about that, I think. Uh yes. Uh, anyway, so. Uh, but, but so we're going to talk about the Black Friday deals. Let's get into that. Yes, yes. Uh, the black yes, Black Friday is of course this Friday. But in many retailers, uh, it is happening right now. So after this show, if we mention something that uh, sounded interesting to you, go at it. <laughs> <laughs> so right here we have you pull it in an Ars Technica article that has all. Of yeah, the, I uh, just I just thought it was a good uh, summation of like all the best deals and like where to get it. I need, I need people in the chat right now to tell me what you want this black Friday and we'll try to help. You yeah. Out. Uh, we'll keep an eye out for it. What should be the first thing we talk about? Do they have GameStop on here? I don't think they do. Uh, I don't think so. I don't know if GameStop is having, Oh, they, they always have a black Friday deal, but I don't know if it's good this year. <laughs> they're all doing black Friday. They're, they're all doing it. I, I keep, you're the second person. In the last like hour, that has told me that people don't do Black Friday anymore. They do. I didn't. No, I didn't. <laughs> I didn't say they weren't doing Black Friday. I, I said they're doing it now mm -hmm. on Tuesday. Mm -hmm. uh, what I meant to say was I don't know if GameStop has a good Black Friday. No, GameStop uh, never does. Right <laughs> well, no, they they usually do like like their used stuff has a good deal. So if you need like a yeah. Switch, you might be able to get a Switch and like a bunch of other stuff. Yeah. Some people. Want, somebody says they want an Oculus Quest Two. OLED uh, TV. We don't do TV stuff. TVs. Yeah. There's all. You don't. I don't. I don't. Getting a TV on Black Friday is complicated, and uh, yeah, you might get stuck with uh, a Black Friday special. Actually, I think the TV that I have in the living room is a Black Friday special. I know. I have at least two TVs in this house are Black Friday specials. What we mean by that is they make the TV specifically for Black Friday, so it's like cheaply made. Um, so it's cheaply made. It has good specs on paper, but compared to like a regular top of the line TV, it's like, you know, a mile or so behind. Sometimes that's all you need, though. So like, yeah, the TV that I have in the living room is a Black Friday special. It's perfectly fine. It did have an issue where it just had a dead pixel line all of a sudden. But S Samsung right. came to my apartment in the middle of COVID and replaced the panel for free. So that service right there. That is service. Uh, people are just naming a bunch of games they want. GameStop legit has yeah. the best deals this year. Oh. Looks like we need to get the GameStop Black Friday deals. Yeah, I'm looking for it. My computer has decided to be Video game slow. deals and bundles. Shop the ultimate Black Friday deals now. We got get up to 60% off select video games. All right, I doubt Far Cry 6 is 60% off. Um, well, I mean, if it's not and they put it there, that's that's kind of to, ballsy. Up to. Yeah. Oh, wow. I will it's, say... It's, uh, it's, it's, it's Far Cry 6 for the PlayStation 5 is $35. Oh, wow. That's, that's really pretty good. damn good. I will also say that a lot of noise has been made about how this is like one of the first times in a long time that uh, Nintendo has discounted... Uh, physical switch games yes so uh and they're big ones like breath of the wild yeah uh super wild. mario u deluxe they're both 40 dollars uh yeah. mario maker actually, is 40 i think those actually might get cheaper on black friday proper but don't quote me on that um and that's new these are new yeah. um 
Mario plus Rabbit's Kingdom Battle is thirteen ninety nine. Wow! And again, that these are brand new. These are not pre owned. Yeah. Uh. So, Link's Awakening says C price in cart, but it's thirty six ninety nine pre owned. So I'm gonna assume that it's forty dollars, which is a really good deal because yeah. that came out last year. Uh, last yeah. year, two years ago, last year. Yeah, last year. Because it was at E3, I remember. Yes. That wasn't last year. That was the year before that. That was two years ago. Yeah. Um, Smash Bros. also says see price and cart. So there's a lot of good. There's a lot of good game deals here. Yeah. Demon uh, Souls, one of the only PlayStation Five exclusives. Yeah. Uh, Forty bucks. Uh, Guardians of the Galaxy, which just came out, thirty bucks. Uh, Paper Mario pre-owned. Thirty-seven ninety-nine. Yeah, or they have it digitally for forty. So there's a lot of good good video game deals from from uh, yeah. GameStop. I'll also say somebody said they wanted an Oculus Quest two. You get a fifty dollar gift card if you get yourself an Oculus Quest two. I have to try to bring there you my you Oculus Quest because you want to play uh, Resident Evil. Resident Evil, yeah. Bring it to Thanksgiving. I'll try. I'll do my best. The in-laws will be there. I'm sure. I'm sure my father-in-law would love to play Resident Evil Four in oh, VR. Oh, we're doing an in-law Thanksgiving this year. Yeah. <laughs> Interesting. All right. Um, yo, what is this? I want this friggin' Pikachu with the Christmas hat. <laughs> oh my God, Snorlax mug is the is the mouth carved oh. out. Oh my God, it is. Yes, I've seen that. <gasps> I can get you can it. put like your honey you says like I can get a dollar twenty six off. Oh, there you Are go. Are you saying like put cereal in there and yeah, you drink out like of the top? Cookie. You're so yeah. smart. You're so smart and also fat. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Nothing you said was wrong. <laughs> uh Pokeball Power Bank. That's pretty cool. I don't see the Pikachu with the hat though. I'm a little disappointed about that. You might have to go through several pages. Oh, the fancy like uh like black series Pokeball. <laughs> Whatever you want to call it. Um that is usually a hundred dollars. It's eighty five dollars. So if you yeah. have a Pokemon fan, that's kind of a good gift. Uh what else do we have here? We got some other gaming peripherals. This is all from GameStop, by the way. Yeah. Yo, a Millennium Falcon. Uh, friggin' wireless charger. I keep threatening to buy that for myself, <laughs> but I have so many wireless chargers and, like, no place to put them. Yeah, I don't have them. Maybe I should get a wireless charger. It, it has to be able to fit on my, on, like, behind my, my, my bed, and, like, that's a very narrow space. Yeah. So the problem I've always had with wireless chargers is if you don't put it exactly right... Yeah. It's not gonna charge like the one you got me. Uh -huh. I, I had to like I had to be very specific, and there's no indication on the pad where the charge is gonna come from. I kind of don't so like I the idea. Most of the night just, like fiddling it around. I kind of don't like the idea of constantly taking it off the charger. Like yeah. if I want to look at it, like yeah. I don't like the idea of having to. Pick it up, look at it, and then put it back. So then it's like you're taking it on and off the charger, and that's not really good for the battery. Yeah. No, it's it's definitely more of like an overnight thing, or like mm -hmm. if you're not going to use your phone for an hour thing. Right. Uh, you can get Mario Kart. Uh, oh, this is just the this is just the race car. This is just the car. The car is a hundred dollars. Well, no, isn't that the RC car they made? This is not the art the. Not the live, like it comes with its own separate yes uh, control. That is, it's a hundred dollars. Well, it's on sale for eighty five, but that's a lot. No, that's a lot for a remote control car. It's just sir, and it's and you can get Mario Kart the circuit live. This you can get Mario Kart live yeah. for a hundred dollars. Like that's a Although, bad deal. They, they that looks pretty big next to that kid, so maybe it's huge. Maybe that's a tiny kid. You don't know the kid. I don't know. I don't know, kids. Yo, this Zelda freaking Christmas tree, though. I'm I'm thinking we're gonna get this. There you go. That's freaking cool. It's USB powered. Oh my god, that's so annoying. Why? Why would I want it to be USB powered? 
I think it's a desk. Yeah, it's a desktop tree. You're supposed to plug it into I your don't. computer. Uh, why? That's such a waste of a port. Just make it a freaking make that's it plug a, into the wall. That's a thing, though. That's it's a, a thing. dumb thing. It's a dumb thing. Remember they used to make easy bake ovens for like a like a CD drive. Yes. Yes. <laughs> um, that, I'm leaving. I'm leaving this in a tab. I'm gonna get that. Uh, what else? We have th these mice. This kind of looks like the mouse that I have. Oh, I wanted one of these. Oh, it's only thirty dollars. I already got a better mouse, but thirty dollars for this. this is the color that I want because this is go go with my mouse pad. The mouse oh. pad that you can get over the on wolfdenapparel.com. Yes, you can get yourself this mouse pad, and then you can get yourself this mouse that'll go great with it. There's also this one. Oh, it's I can't click on it. I thought white would go wouldn't, good too. This one has a good white. Wouldn't you want a mouse though that's a different color than your mouse pad so you can see it and it doesn't get lost? It's a good idea. You might lose it in the mouse pad. This yeah. white one would go I, good I, though, because if you're right handed, then it'll be on the blue side. Ah, oh, there you go. I say that as I currently have my black mouse against a black mouse pad. <laughs> you have a black mouse pad? You can't tell people you're not using a wolf den mouse pad. I, I've i told fuck, you this. Man? The Wolf Den mouse pad is too big for my desk. I know. I know it is. And I refuse to make a smaller one. They got some cool keyboard. Oh my god, this Logitech one's $180. Looks pretty Jeez. cool, though. That's not... You can't look at this. That's not what I want you to see. Uh Oh. And they have uh different different switches in it, too. That's pretty cool. Um, what I, cool. What did I, what did I just click Here on? you go. You can get yourself a lame mouse pad on on GameStop's website. <laughs> uh, anyway, I don't, I don't, I doubt there's any other like, uh, like hardware deals from GameStop. Like, like, yeah, uh, I doubt you're gonna get any, uh, uh, any I of mean, the consoles not, or anything. You're not gonna get a PS5 or a series console. You might get decent pre-owned bundles for like a ps4 or an xbox one mm -hmm. but other than that yeah don't expect any good deals or bundles for any of the next gen consoles this year so i mean you will get the same mario kart 8 bundle we've talked about on this show uh yes <laughs> a regular old nintendo switch that comes with mario kart 8 and three months of uh Nintendo Switch Online. I almost called it Xbox yeah. Live. It's not that. <laughs> it's three hundred dollars, which uh, isn't that yeah. great of a deal. But I mean, it, you kind of yeah. this happens a lot of Black Fridays. You get the console, and they just toss in some games. Yeah. Uh, the PlayStation Five and Xbox Series S or uh, S and X are still hard to get. So I doubt you'll be getting mm. uh, any package deals on those. I think you'll just be lucky yeah. to get one. Um, and I'll talk about how to get one maybe after this. Um, oh, GameStop has some deals on TVs. Again, I don't really want to go into that. Yeah. Unless they have like a super crazy one that's like HDMI 2.1. I don't, I don't know. It's, I doubt it. I if doubt we're going to see an HDMI 2.1 TV on sale. If you're buying from GameStop, if you're buying a TV right now and it's not HDMI 2.1, you're you're really messing up. But I think that's a problem because if most TVs are not going to have 2.1 in order to save costs and people aren't going to look for, you know, if, if they're going to want to save money, they're not going to go for the expensive TV. They're going to go for the cheaper TV. So my understanding is HDMI 2.1 isn't expensive. It's it's the uh -huh. panel that you're putting in that that's 4K 120 hertz. That's where things get a little crazy. Okay. And it doesn't necessarily have to be that to have HDMI 2.1. Right. Um, and, and you can get some pretty cheap ones that that are uh, 4K, 120 hertz with uh, HDMI 2.1. Right. Um, I'd imagine that most new ones would have that. Um, but if you're going to get a deal, if it's going to be on sale, it's probably going to be an older model. Um, but anyway, this Samsung monitor, I've seen this before. Uh, yeah. 240 hertz curved ultra right. wide 49 inches ultra wide uh Jeez. it's like super ultra wide i think is there is there a w different word for this i think yeah it's super ultra wide is the dual qhd display oh, that's pretty cool does that mean it has like two 
You wait, wait. The 49 inch DQHD dis resolution brings you a display as wide as two QHD monitors sitting side by side with incredibly detailed pin sharp images. Experience a more encompassing view with maximum space to take in all the action. It'd be really cool if it had two inputs. Yeah. Like if you could just straight up put a game on one side, that'd be pretty cool. Uh, anyway, the resolution is 5,120 by 1440. So it's, that's what QHD yeah, is? Super... QHD? QHD no, is I've... 1440. I, I've never heard of QHD. I know that's full that's HD 1440, and though. UHD. Yeah, UHD is 4K. QHD yeah. must be 1440, which is the size of my ultra wide, but this make this is even wider than my ultra wide. Right. Um, 32 by nine aspect ratio. <laughs> That's just silly. So a thousand bucks is a, well, a 1,099. It's usually about 1,600. So that's actually pretty good. Yeah. That's a really good deal. Yeah. Uh, I guess that's it for GameStop. Nothing else really going on. You I went to a whole Best pack Buy's of Yu-Gi-Oh cards for $95. <laughs> I went to Best Buy's website just to see, and on the front page it says Black Friday is here, and I'm looking for the video game category, and the picture they use for video games, you would think it would be a controller, or a game, or a picture of the console. It's a headset. That's so annoying. Like, how would I know that that's video games when it looks like all, like all other headphones, just with a mic on it? Where did you see that? Best Buy. <laughs> no, but where on the website? Oh, right there. No, front I see page. it. I see it. I yeah. see it. Uh, they have the same... Of, we're going to see the same uh, 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 Nintendo Switch deal, the package with, with Mario Kart. We're going to see that we're gonna see. We're going to see a lot of the same deals across the board. Like Deathloop here at Best Buy is also 30 bucks. Uh, New Super Mario Brothers U is also 40 bucks. Was um, the Mario Kart that comes in this always a digital download? Yes. I'm one of these retailers is going to give us a little something extra with that Mario Kart 8. Probably. That I happens. don't know if it's I think it was GameStop like a year ago they gave you like a $10 gift card or something. Yeah. Uh also we have the same uh Oculus Quest 2 that gives you uh the same you got a bat, you got a gift card. You got a $50 gift card. So, yeah. It's the same deal that GameStop had. It just depends. Do you want a GameStop gift card or a Best Buy gift card? Yo, the Dyson freaking vacuum that I got mom last year, that was a yeah. huge pain in the ass to get, is the same, is, that's the deal. They have this, they have a deal here. I had to get it like refurbished from Newegg and they just Yo, have it here. Look, the, the, actually, it was the big pack. deal that they had it at Costco and it immediately sold out at Costco. Of course. So now it's yeah. just here that's at Best Buy. I can just buy it. it right now. Actually, I should buy it right no. now because my vacuum fucking sucks. So actually, I should, I should rephrase that. My vacuum doesn't suck when I need it to. <laughs> life hack: check the official Dyson eBay store oh. because they will sell refurbished models of not just that particular vacuum, but like the previous generations that are just as good for a lot less. So keep an eye on that because that's Very how we got ours. We have we have one of these Dysons. It's not as fancy as Mom's. But we we paid a lot less than that for it. I think Mom's is a V11 and this is a V10. I don't remember yeah, exactly I think which we one. We have a V8. I got a Black and Decker situation that was pretty cheap on Amazon, and mm -hmm. uh, like the, like the there's like a base unit and like the middle comes out and it becomes like a hand duster thing. But yeah, when it's in the base, it turns on for a split second and then turns off. And when you take it out of uh -oh. the base. It stays on. Does so I don't know on. what the fuck. Uh, I don't know. No, it, stay, it works when yeah. it's not in the base. It's very strange. So I don't know. Instead of, instead of just doing a refurb, I'm just going to throw the whole thing out. There you go. It's also annoying because I can't just throw out the base because the whole the, you need the base to charge it. Life's really hard. Yeah. This is what we get for being adults. Mm -hmm. uh, anyway. 
there's a bunch of TV deals at Best Buy. It seems like if you want a TV, yeah. Best Buy is a good place to get it. Uh, that Samsung Crystal UHD, $460. Kevin Kenson has a problem Damn. with Samsung TVs. He doesn't like Samsung TVs. Really? Yeah, all of the TVs that we have are Samsung. Yeah, the TV in my basement's a Samsung. Yeah. I just don't really... I don't really fuck with TVs, you know? <laughs> the problem is, like, a TV used to be something you'd buy, like, once... And then maybe like 10, 15 years down the road, you replace it. Now, you know, it, it's they're trying to make it so that like, oh, TV, you have to replace every like five years like you do your phone. Mm -hmm. And I'm not about that life. I know pe there's certain people out there who buy a new TV every single year. And uh, yeah. those people should float the industry for the rest of us. Like those people yeah. are going to get the new TV no matter what. So like you don't have to like add in some manufactured obsolescence. You could just rely on those guys to just buy a new TV every year. I don't think I ever realized, I watched a Lewis Rossman video on this. I don't think I ever realized just how much the the cost of a TV is subsidized by all of those uh, streaming apps that are built in to the TV. Mm -hmm. That's why all TVs are smart TVs now because they're offsetting the cost of it because like Netflix and Hulu and Amazon are paying to have their apps preloaded onto the TV. You know, mom's TV has freaking ads on it. <laughs> yeah. Very strange. Mm-hmm. Uh, and there's no way to turn that off. <laughs> no, and it's very annoying. It makes it confusing for yeah. an old lady. Yes. And I got to get the call in the middle of this podcast. Why can't, Why am I getting an ad for the House of Gucci? I don't own any Gucci clothes. See, see. Oh, that's a movie? You get the calls oh, now because I'm Gaga. mean about I'm mean when I help. <laughs> I'm also 10 minutes away. This actually happened to me. I was, I had just gotten home. I was about to take my daughter out of the, out of the car seat. And mom calls me with a TV problem. And I just said, you know what? It'll just be easier if I come over. And oh, so I, no. had to, I had to plug her back into the car seat and drive the 10 minutes to mom's house to fix her TV. Good times. <laughs> I, I always try to walk them through the issue so that they can come to the conclusion on their own. Because the problem is they know how to do it. They just don't want to do it. And they'd rather you do it for them. That's the thing. So so I that know. pisses me off. So when I get the call, like, like I can't log into – or my email isn't working. Okay, well, you got to log in. What's your password? I don't know. Well, then how am I supposed to fucking know? Yeah. Anyway. You should – when I went to Florida, I literally went to Florida just so – this, this is the bitching about our parents hour of the podcast. Yeah. When I went to <laughs> Florida, I literally just went there too to set up the tv basically and hang a picture yeah. um and i uh i i had to ex explain to her how the remotes work there are two remotes yes it is is the tv it's a smart tv and there's a cable box and that is impossible to wrap your head around <laughs> for some reason yes. But I, I understand because it's the exact opposite of how it works at their home in Long Island. Because yeah. in, uh, there, they have an Apple TV with all of their smart, with all of Netflix and Hulu and all that stuff. Yeah. But in Florida, the TV itself has all of those apps. Yeah. So it's 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 the opposite. It's very confusing. Are you reading the chat yeah. at all? No. Anyway, uh, uh, no. I was looking at I was looking at something else. Uh, no, I was reading the, uh, somebody in the chat said, "Are you reading the chat?" Oh, <laughs> you were um, mad at me again. No, I mean, yeah, but for other reasons. <laughs> yeah. Um. Uh, anyway, we're looking at Best Buy right now. Um, yeah. We should get dead Sorry, I was more at AirPods. He's the only one I know who has problems with AirPods. The only one. Like, I yeah. don't understand it. 
he gets them this all sweaty a, and they cor it corrodes problem. the the contact on the on the charger. Maybe we should get him like those beats, like those workout beats, because they work exactly the same. They just sync to the phone automatically. Mm -hmm. It'll just be, you know, it'll be cool with the hip hop community now. Maybe. I don't remember buying mom AirPods. I don't know how that. You I don't did. remember that happening. Anyway, we that for her for Mother's Day. Okay. Maybe. So what else do we got besides TVs and shit? We got a whole bunch of nonsense. Let's go to games. Well, I'm looking at digital photo frames because our daughter broke ours, so I need to get a new one. <laughs> she loved that digital photo frame. She loved she it too much. And then she loved she loved it so much she killed it. Oh yes. Um Just Dance 2022. That's gonna be you. You're gonna there be a go. Just Dance Dad. 30 bucks. Absolutely not. I will no, not raise my it. daughter I'm, in a in a just dance hellhole. I'm I'm opening it another tab. Uh, Death Loop thirty bucks. What didn't we see that already? There you go. Yeah, that was the other. That, that's like I said. You're gonna see a lot of repeats on games like Death Loop, mm -hmm. like Mario, Zelda. Amazon Be had uh, Breath of the Wild for twenty seven bucks, but they don't anymore. Damn. Yeah, the Breath of the Wild and the Super Mario Deluxe looks the same. Looks like the same price, forty bucks. Um, Turtle Beach headset. These look like cheapo headsets. Thirty bucks. They look like oh, they're Turtle Beach is supposed to be good. No, Turtle Beach was the one that every middle school kid got for their Xbox 360. But it doesn't mean it was good. It just means it's the one that everybody right. got. Anyway, Razer Wolverine. I actually kind of want this because I think it has micro <laughs> switches in all of the face buttons. Uh, it's only oh, 100 really? bucks, so I might actually get this. There you go. Just to give it a whirl. Yeah. I'm curious about, about that. I, although I did get the Halo Edition uh, 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 Elite controller, and I'm afraid yeah. to use it because it's too nice looking. <laughs> I don't want to get my sweaty hands all over it. You'll have to get gloves to play with, to play it. So is this where you got the uh, PlayStation Plus for twelve months? The twelve months for forty dollars? Uh, no, I got it on Amazon. But this is okay. this is one of those deals that everyone has. Okay, I'd rather get it on Amazon. It's currently, I have an Amazon credit. Card. Yeah, it's currently sitting. It's currently sitting in my Amazon cart, and I remembered that you can't use your Amazon uh, credit card points for digital purchases. So I have to buy it with my actual money. Wait. Oh, you can't use your Amazon credit? That's weird. Yeah. So, like, you know how, like, if you have an Amazon card, yeah. you get points to... You can't use those points on digital purchases. That's really stupid. Loophole, because I did this with Cyberpunk, uh, you buy... You can buy an Amazon gift card with points. So just buy it. Buy a gift card for the amount of money you need to buy your digital purchase. That is really stupid. I know, but sometimes you got to be stupid to beat the system. Um, there's a Seagate drive that's Xbox themed. That has a green light on it. That looks pretty cool. That it's on fancy. sale for $105, but that's uh -huh. still a lot for a uh, four terabyte for a four uh, Seagate drive. I mean, I don't know if you noticed, but like hard drives have been pretty expensive recently. So like for a four terabyte external hard drive for a small size like that's not out of the ordinary yeah they're used they're around the same uh i'm seeing them on amazon for 95 or 100 so it's yeah a, you're not really not saving that much by just getting it somewhere else 92 dollars. Yeah. i mean you can get a cool green light on it yeah and i mean i guess it's good too if like you specific if you specifically want like a drive for your xbox and it's labeled as Xbox, so you know that's what it is. <laughs> so you know this but, is the Xbox one. I just write yeah. with uh, with a silver Sharpie on my hard drives. That's what I got to do. I got to write, because right now it's just it's just a regular ass Western digital drive. I should probably label it. I just saw, yeah, so this arcade one-up, Ms. Pac-Man and Galaga, $530? Mm -hmm. That's so much. Hmm. I wonder why that's a lot of money. Then we have Pac-Man Legacy 12-in-1 Arcade, $350. Thir 
Really? Yeah. I don't know, dude. Arcade one up things are like they're great, but like the price range is like you know, it's either ah, that's kind of a lot of money to what the fuck I can't afford yeah. that. So what games does this have? This the the twelve in one has Pac Man, Pac Land, Pac Man Plus, Super Pac Man, Pac and Pal, Pac Mania, Gal- Galaxian, Galaga, Dig Dug, Dig Dug Two, Mappy, and Rompers. And all of that is worth significantly less than <laughs> just Miss Pac Man and Galaga. Yeah, actually, just Miss Pac Man because this comes with Galaga. Well, so do you really? I don't know. Ms. Pac Man is worth five hundred and thirty dollars for these people. I don't know. I know there's like weird rights issues with Ms. Pac Man, so maybe mm-hmm. the cost is like to offset the rights to it, the licensing to it. But that's still a lot to justify getting the Ms. Pac Man version over the Pac Man version, right? Uh, otherwise, I'm seeing a lot of the same deals. Yeah, yeah. I think I think we're oh. gonna be running into that. This is pretty good. These these power a controllers for the Switch thirteen ninety nine. These are very good controllers. They're wired, oh, wow. Yeah, but that's a very good deal if you need any extra controllers. Yeah. Uh, just say even just throw away if you need to get it for a kid. Yeah. Maybe you just want to go. You're having family dinner. You know you're bringing your Switch. You need a couple of extra controllers. You could just leave them there. Yeah. Thirteen ninety nine is not a bad deal. Perfect. Uh, Cyberpunk's only twenty bucks. You can definitely get that for cheaper other places. <laughs> All right, what else? What's next? Uh, what is next? You want to get a whole ass turkey from Target? There you go. Let's talk about Amazon. Let's do Amazon because that's the only one that I really care about. Yeah. Uh, hold on. Let me pull up Amazon. No, this is the one well, that Amazon. Had. I I hate the way they do their like their deals and stuff. <laughs> this is where I'm always, gonna get my PlayStation like, Plus. This is like it's always mixed in with crap. <laughs> yes, I'm looking at the Razer input devices. Oh, they have a nice white mouse. I should have just gotten that. It was really hard to find a white mouse. I wanted a, a nice really? white mouse to go with my mouse pad. Yeah. The Logitech one that I wanted was $150 because what? it was like super light and like had like a billion DPI or whatever. And I just ended up getting the MX Revolution, but it's gray, but it's fucking yeah. sick. That mouse is awesome. Uh, Razer USB streaming microphone, $35. So that's pretty cheap. That's good. Razer Kishi, 50, uh, uh, I'm sorry, $60. That is a very good deal. That's one of my favorite uh, uh, controllers for uh, for an Android phone. So that's a good deal. It's usually 100 bucks. It's only 60 And it's on Amazon. Uh, oh, and they have the Wolverine controller for 100 So I will, uh, I'd rather buy it from Amazon than Best Buy. Anyway, they're going to have the same sort of game deals. Yeah. I mean, Amazon, because it's Amazon, they might throw in like a random. Uh, here's here's like, you know, 90 percent off this game from two years ago that you didn't get or whatever. What is, what makes them think they have any right to be putting a GTX 1050 graphics card in a computer these days? Like that's that's a very that's an old graphics card. Like what the fuck? Like, like get, <laughs> I know. You. So I was like, I know Willis know what I'm talking about. There. <laughs> so this is the 1050. Uh-huh. I don't even think they make a 50 in the new ones, but they're on the 30 series. So it's, this is the 10 series. They're on the 30 series. Right. They're on the 30. That's okay. technically not what they're called. But I'm following you. Yeah. So they didn't even make a 50 of the 30s. I don't think. So okay. this is like the worst of even those. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't, I don't, it, it doesn't make any sense. Uh, I mean, I know graphics cards are hard to come by these days, so they probably just threw in whatever they could. Yeah, I'm sure. I mean, how, how old is that crazy. graphics card though? I mean, I got it with my computer, so it has to be that old. Okay. 
pretty old. Because I was gonna. I was going to say, for some people, that might just be enough to get them started. They do have 3050s, but only on laptops. Oh. Well, this ain't no laptop. This is a big-ass boy. Uh, Yeah, it's $845. Jeez. Somebody said at least it can play Halo. I don't even know. I don't know, man. PC specs... Like I, that this is why I don't PC game because everything is different, and like you could have like the top of the line specs on paper, but it still won't play your game for some arbitrary reason. Also, I clicked on oh that's why home is also I clicked on the video game filter and it was giving me vacuum cleaners. <laughs> I, I didn't. I just burped. I didn't know they made a controller for Amazon Luna. Yes. Uh, yeah, it's a controller just for Luna. I, I don't know if it's like the Stadia controller where it's like on Wi-Fi and you can technically use it as a regular uh, controller. Mm-hmm. Well, this this is a cool looking controller. It looks a lot like a pro controller. I legit thought it was a custom pro controller when I looked at it. Yeah. Uh, it's 50 bucks instead of normally 70. Uh, hopefully for just you can the controller. Use yeah, hopefully you could use it on regular games. Um, yeah. This guy's just eating a bowl of mixed nuts. <laughs> cool. Hey, uh, those are good gamer snacks. They're healthy. <laughs> I'm gonna open. I'm. I'm. I'm not gonna buy this, but I'm gonna leave it in a tab so I yeah. can ponder it some more. <laughs> uh, what else do we got? Far Cry Six for a wide variety of different prices. Uh, those are all the digital versions. Mm-hmm. Forty dollars. I yeah. think it was cheaper. I think it was thirty at GameStop, wasn't it? Well, again, the, uh, f- you'll probably see this because you know digital versions, especially for newer games, they like to they always price those a little bit higher as to not upset the brick and mortar stores out ah. there. Yeah, um, that's why when digital games are released, they're they're full price instead of being you know ten dollars less. It's to I... not upset brick and mortar. I hate the Amazon website because you get garbage like this. Like this thing, yeah. this is a keyboard that's all RGB and it's got a mouse that's all RGB and it's got a space for your credit card, a space for three pens, and a space for your cell phone. Yeah. Why? Why do we need this? And look at how big that we'll s- dongle is. <laughs> I will say I'm actually very proud of Amazon because... This is the first time I've been to, uh, you know, check the gaming deals, and I have not seen at least 14 different RGB colored Xbox or PlayStation 4 stands. Right. You know the ones I'm talking about? They're like, they have fans yeah, in the it, cheaper and they, like, ones. they got lights, and like, you can dock your controllers, and they have like five games you can, slots for five games. Right. Yo, this keyboard actually looks sick. Look at this thing. Uh, Woomier K61 60% mechanical keyboard hot swappable Gateron switches uh, and then it says for PC, PS4, and Xbox and then it says oh yeah PC, PS4, and Xbox what the hell? yeah you can you can use a keyboard on those on a PS4? yeah I didn't know that yeah I don't know if, well, I don't know if all games support it but I think a decent amount do well, this comes with brown switches. I don't want any browns. That's a cool keyboard, though. Blue switches. Red switches. Those are like... Blue switches are the really loud ones, right? I think so. Red are not loud. Red are right. linear. Uh, yellow, I believe, are also linear. Okay. Oh, I got I to gotta make sure I, I know what I'm talking about here. I don't know. I saw one video explaining to me the different the difference between all the different key colors and I one ear out the other. Yeah, you gotta memorize them. It's kind of annoying. Yeah, that's why I'm not gonna worry about that when I have to buy a keyboard. So there's there's linear, which is like mm-hmm. it doesn't make a click at all. It just goes right through. Then there's right. tactile, which makes a little bump, it makes a little click sound. 
And then there's clicky, yeah. which makes a really thick, harsh click sound. Um, right. Reds, I know, are linear. It just goes right through. Um, and I think yellows are also linear. I'm not sure, though. Uh, the ones I have on my fancy keyboard at the studio, those are yellows. And those feel great. Right. So I think blues, I think they are tactile. And I think browns might be also. Uh, Crystal Leo says blue are tactile and clicky. Mm. I think nobody likes browns. That people don't like browns. Okay. So just get red or blue. Okay. Or probably neither of those. Or yellow. Yellow. Yellow is good. Anyway, uh, what else? Oh, this is Amazon. We're still on, right? Yeah. Just doing some shopping uh, it was for myself. Was on page two, and it and it like crashed on me. All right, I'm back. Uh, yeah, fifty percent off Death Loop, fifty percent off Guardians of the Galaxy. Any deals on Ratchet and Clank? I just saw it. That's actually a game. I feel like uh, pe- I people should it. probably play. Yeah, if I, I, especially if it's everybody's game of the year. It just went away. Like it was here and now it's gone. Yeah. Ooh, Sonic Colors like collector's edition? What? Oh, that's the the launch edition. Oh my god. It like it like baited it like click baited me. It was like the cover photo and I clicked on it and it threw me into a category. Oh, it's just all Sega games. Lame. Uh they did just uh release a patch a big patch for Sonic Colors. So if you've been waiting for that, now's the time. <laughs> I think the the page refreshed and it like fucked up everything. Yeah, I'm like I I was on page two and now I'm seeing just all bunch of weird stuff. Yeah, yeah, that's very annoying. Yeah, I was never a fan of Amazon's deals page. Yeah, their their layout is bad. Yeah, but <laughs> but I mean that's where I like to buy stuff. That's where everyone likes to buy things. It just went away. It's freaking. They had. I can. I can just look up Ratchet and Clank. Okay. I. All right. So I had clicked on fifty it bucks. Said save. It said save fifty percent on WWE Two K Twenty, and I clicked on it because I want to see the price and lambast it for being a bad deal because <laughs> that's a game that's you know two years old by this point. Everybody hated it. It was like the worst reviewed game of that year. Uh, but the page sent me to. Uh, 2K Battlegrounds, uh, oh. which was also a bad game, and is 15 bucks. Oh, that's a deal. That's a deal. I mean, I wouldn't recommend it. It's still a bad game. <laughs> still a bad game. Best Buy and Target both have Ratchet Click for 50. Okay. It says X, X, XB, uh, Expiation. I played all the PlayStation PS Plus collection games that interested me on the PlayStation 5 and I need something new to play. What do you suggest? Ratchet and Clank. Yeah, apparently. Uh, let's go for, through some notifications real quick. We got Smash Bry yeah. Man with three months. Thank you. We got Drew Suave with 17 months. Hello, gentlemen. Do you play? Do you guys play VR ever? No, not really. Um, you know what I do? I put the quest on, I download a game, and then I never touch it. <laughs> <laughs> because I'm lazy. Yeah, but, I don't have the the space or the money for VR at this juncture. Hopefully, we will be playing Resident Evil Four sometime soon. I also have you yes. have to try Vader Immortal. It's fucking awesome. I've heard that's very good. It's awesome. You got to try that on on the quest when I give it to you. So I, I would like to try that, and one of these days, Half Life Alex. Yes, I also want to try that. I have a lot of things I want to try. And uh, Shad Pro, thank you for the Prime subscription. I appreciate it. Thank you, everyone. Uh, butt face man dude guy says, <laughs> question, do you have any advice for pairing 8-bit Duke controllers with the Switch? Also, my brother, and I love your content. Keep up the awesome work, and thanks f- if you have any answers. Um, no, it's annoying to pair any controller sometimes. Sometimes it works instantly. Yeah. Sometimes it's a pain. I always recommend just plugging them in. And just do using that to sync it. Um, yeah. Unfortunately. But that doesn't always work with the Ape yeah. do controllers. Yeah. So, uh, no, you literally just have to... What I do is I hit the sync button 
on both. And then I just mash all of the buttons on the 8 bit controller until eventually it works. Yeah. It is really annoying. We also have Carl Lover. Thank you for the two months. Happy two months, Wolf Bros. Happy Thanksgiving and Merry Christmas. Well, thank you very much. Same to you. Happy all of that stuff to you. Um, I think we can move on from here. Let's just do okay. Target and Walmart real quick. Target, you can get a whole ass Target. All right. There you go. <laughs> In case you really fucked up Thanksgiving, here you go. You can fix it. Uh, why am I looking at turkeys? Video games. Here we go. Click. I'm trying to get to the PlayStation Store website and the Xbox Live website. I have those up. To see what they have. You're never oh, going to believe is... this, Will. What? You can get an Oculus Quest 2 with a $50 Target <laughs> gift card. Wow. And the same Mario Kart deal. You know, one of my one of my coworkers sent over of Apple's Black Friday deals. Mm -hmm. Um it's there are no deals. Certain items you get, you get a gift card for a certain am amount of money. And it's not even like new stuff. If you get an iPhone 12, they'll give you like a $50 gift card. Interesting. Yeah. Not the 13, the 12. So so I've never seen this before. Sonic Mania and Team Sonic Racing in a double pack. Uh, you never see. I've seen. I've seen that bundle, and twenty five bucks is a good deal. Yes. <coughs> but, uh, it doesn't look like the plus version though. No, that's dumb. No, I think I think it's the base model. Just give us the plus. Also, um, Tony Hawk's Pro Skater one and two for the Switch, twenty bucks. There you go. Also, also, don't buy Activision games, but <laughs> maybe steal that. <laughs> Monster Hunter Rise, thirty bucks. Uh, that's not a, that's a, that's a very good deal. Uh, yeah. All these game deals, they're all pretty similar across the board. Like yeah. you can get them pretty much, and you see them at one place, you could probably find it somewhere else for, the, for around the same. Uh, they have the Zelda game and watch. Is that on sale, or is they just saying that they have it? Uh, you have to. Uh, it's out of stock. <laughs> it's it's, okay. it's not on sale at all. Um, LG gaming monitor, two hundred and eighty dollars. That's pretty good. Oh, it's it's ten eighty p. Get out of my face. It's two hundred and forty hertz, but get out of my face. I mean, uh, some people, it's good for them, and they don't. Some people will definitely prioritize, uh, frame rate over resolution. Right, but most of the people who are watching this are probably console gamers, and you're not getting 240 out of nothing. Right. Uh, you can get an Elite controller for $10 off. Yay. I think Amazon had that for cheaper. So I remember seeing that for less than 170 Let's see. It's the same price. $179.99. Oh, if you get it from uh if you get it from this seller on Amazon, it is three hundred and sixty two dollars for some reason. <laughs> Custom Amazon seven sellers. watts pro rapid fire mod. I am interested. No. I, I need to find out what that is. And how I'm gonna that, that, do that on my uh uh Special edition one. <laughs> yeah. I just want to, I'm, I'm watching a YouTube video and I want to see. Why is Lion's Tech Tips in an ad? I don't know. Does he do ads now? That we have got your back here at 7 Watts. We will not leave you with like, you know. Oh, it's so 7 Watts is a company. I thought it was like. Uh whatever uh i'll look at that later looks boring now uh <laughs> we don't care about target anymore yeah i oh, know we were looking at target uh but yeah there's really nothing i don't see anything yeah, oh, xbox game pass i need to renew all my subscriptions i just renewed my xbox subscription and i'm kind of mad that 
I didn't wait for this. But I don't think there's any for just Xbox Live. I think the only the only thing you can get is Game Pass. Yeah, they're rolling over. Yeah. Uh, this is twenty five dollars for three months of Ultimate, which is pretty good. I'll leave this in the tab. I want a yeah. year though. I don't want three months. Uh, Walmart. Do we really care anymore? I think we're no. like running out now. It looks like it's running the same out. shit. A yeah. Samsung uh vacuum, one hundred and eighty. There you go. Pretty good. You can be this guy in a friggin' uh, Maserati. <laughs> Get your daughter. Oh, is that a pink one? Get your daughter a pink Man. Maserati. Get her expensive tastes right off the bat. No, I've already committed. She's getting the Batmobile as her first Power Wheels type car. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not gonna f not gonna raise a fool. Ooh, ooh, ooh. They have Series S's. Oh, there you go. Act now. <laughs> Black Friday deal. Normal price. <laughs> actually, it's 99 cents off. There you go. I actually, again, I have to say, the Series S is a f fantastic console, and it's worth considering yeah. if you don't have a 4K TV especially. It's yeah. it's it's worth it. it it's, a, it's a good, cheap little workhorse. And it's also worth it if you want to just friggin' hack it and put some emulated stuff on it because it's, it's really easy yeah. to do. Mm -hmm. Um. So yeah, if you really want a next gen console, let's maybe you want to play Halo. I think a Series S is friggin' awesome. Yeah. Uh. Anyway, you have the digital storefronts on PlayStation and Microsoft. Yeah. Uh, you I could the, get the twelve the months straight is, from PlayStation. You can. Um. I think the problem is, well, Deathloop is still thirty bucks, but a game like Far Cry on the PlayStation Store, it's forty dollars. Mm -hmm. Well, specifically, it's forty dollars and nineteen cents. Um, so you're gonna see, like, in some cases, it's a, it's a little higher. Um, on Xbox, I I see Resident Evil Village for thirty bucks, which is a good deal, and I think in line with everyone else. Mm -hmm. But then you'll get like the random, uh, like what was I saw? You'll see like Control for twelve bucks, which I didn't see any Black Friday deals at the stores. Um. And things like that. What I usually like to do with the digital stores is I just run through and see what's like less than ten dollars, <laughs> right? Because sometimes you'll see a lot of gems that are less than ten bucks. I think the uh, yeah, Arkham Knight is four dollars. Whoa! Right now, that's crazy. yeah. Uh, the uh, same thing with the Return to Arkham, which is Arkham Asylum, and Arkham City. Uh, uh, the Bioshock collection is ten bucks on Xbox. That's, that's a very good deal, also. Yeah. I very quickly want to talk about uh, how to get one of the new consoles if you want it, and this is going to include yeah. the OLED Nintendo Switch because that's probably going to be pretty hard to find too. So the things yeah. that are going to be hot commodities and hard to find: PlayStation Five, I think, will be the number one. Uh, Xbox Series X will probably be up there, and the OLED Nintendo Switch will be up there. The Series yeah. S might be hard to find eventually, like after this weekend, but uh, I think that you'll probably be able to find it. And honestly, I think that that is a perfectly fine console. I think that you yeah. should be perfectly happy for that. Um. Anyway, uh, those would be uh, these are going to be the hot commodities, and they're going to be hard to find. And there's, you're not going to get any deals on them, so don't expect anything like that. Um, but I'd imagine on Friday or Thursday night, these will start to pop up for sale randomly at different retailers. Um, Ars Technica has an article here that says you can pre-order them. Oh. Uh, apart from the usual suspects below, we'll note that Sony itself is expected to sell the console through its PlayStation Direct store, though it's not available as of this writing, and the initial wave of pre-orders may be limited to those who were selected by the company as part of the pre-order registration program it announced last month. Those are expected to begin on Friday. So you can pre-order from PlayStation themselves sometime right. on Friday. Uh, and there, the, ours, this Ars Technica article uh, it is called F5 for P PS5. That's F5 is the refresh. All right. your PlayStation 5 pre-order links 
in one place. Um, so you scroll down and it has all the links right here. Yeah. And I guess you just literally, you can just sit here and just refresh these pages. Um, but this is where they will eventually go up on sale. There's a few ways that are a little bit easier to keep track of this. I mean, you can just sit there and refresh those if you really want. Oh, they all even have B&H up here. A lot of people don't know this. Adorama has yeah. consoles. Adorama I find it funny when like, that they can get consoles from like professional camera stores. <laughs> yeah. I mean, they're just electronic stores. Um, so the, you can just sit on these pages and refresh them. This is where they will be available yeah. on Friday at some point. However, what I like to do... Uh, I think a good Twitter account to follow, especially this Friday, is Wario64. Mm -hmm. uh, I would turn on alerts or something or just refresh his page over and over again. He will post when it goes up for pre-order on every storefront. So this is just a good thing to have open on your computer. Uh, I use TweetDeck because TweetDeck... Uh, like, if you leave Twitter open on your computer, it doesn't refresh automatically. It'll just say, one new tweet. And then you have to click on it. Yeah. Tweet Deck gives you a feed that constantly updates. So I always had that on the left side of my computer. And if like Wario 64 tweets or something, it'll come up. And if it's a PlayStation 5, I'll most likely see it. Um, so that's a good way to... This Twitter account, Wario 64, is a good way to keep track of that. But he's also going to be posting just generic gaming deals. So it's kind of just a good thing to have anyway. But if you're specifically looking for a PlayStation 5 or an Xbox Series X or an OLED Switch, you'll find it here, but you might have to sort through some other crap. Right. Another website I like to use or I like to tell other people about, nowinstock.net. Our friend Greg was able to buy a PlayStation 5 this way by, by staying on here. So what you do is on Friday or even now, if you want, you just leave this website open on your computer and you turn on the stock alarm. And it'll go like this. And that means that uh, one of these websites has the PlayStation 5 in stock. So uh, then you hear that sound. You run over to your computer and you click whatever website says in stock. Uh, and the same thing goes for Zoolert. Zoolert.com. It's now in stock.net. I always confuse that. Now in stock.net is the one I was just talking about. Zoolert works exactly the same way. Uh, but it's right. zoolert.com. Uh, yeah, this is the sound that it makes. Can I test it? Oh, you can have a bird, a lion, or a rooster. It won't let me preview the sound. How annoying. Uh, so yeah, they, 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 they work pretty much the same. You can also set alerts for text messages, Discord, email, on, on both of them. They have the same thing. Text message alerts, though... I bet they won't be as instant as just leaving the page open on your computer. So you might be better off just on Friday, just leaving it open, speakers full blast. So if anything happens, you can run to the computer and grab it. Uh, again, it'll also work for the OLED switch. And they have other stuff too on these websites. Uh, if you want a graphics card or something. Uh, yeah, they have all of these different GPUs. Uh, this is actually a good idea. Should leave up a 3070. <laughs> wow, there's all different. There's so many different types. So yeah, yeah if you need a console, like... that's how you do it. What, what were you saying? I was just gonna complain about graphics card numbering schemes. Now, like, it's just, it's just they just throw numbers in there, and you're supposed to know that like this is better than that. Well, no, the problem is uh, there's different manufacturers that make the same card. That too, yeah. You have Asus, you have uh, EVGA, you have Gigabyte, you have uh, MSI. Mm -hmm. And they all have different like benchmarks, but they're all pretty much the same. Uh, if you get any 30, 70, 80, or 90, you're lucky. Anyway, uh, what's this, Zotac? It's $1,000? It's just Jesus. a 3070, my guy. Jesus, I'm trying to get it because it's cheap, not because I want to friggin' donate my kidneys. 
<laughs> anyway. Uh, I guess that's it. I guess it's all Black Friday stuff that we can talk about. Yeah, good, there you go. Good luck, everybody. Go, go forth. Stay safe. And Try not course, to go out. And uh, yeah. definitely be nice to everybody that's out this weekend. If you're in New York, welcome to the shit show. It's going to be a fucking nightmare yeah. this weekend. <laughs> and, uh, you know, just FYI, in most places, Black Friday is happening right now. And it will probably continue until after Cyber Monday. So... Don't feel like you have to rush. Even if you leave, even if you don't go shopping this weekend, Mm -hmm. restaurants are still packed on the, on this weekend and stuff. The movies are still, every industry is packed. So if you have, if you have, if you come across any service workers, don't be an asshole. Everybody's going through it. Okay. Be nice. Anyway. Uh, yeah. hey, Carl of Dern, I answered you already. Never mind. <laughs> uh, Cable Fox in the chat says, Back in March, I ordered a pre-built computer that had a 3090 and an 11th Gen i9. It arrived in June. Oh, my God. <laughs> That's terrible. That sounds like a beefy computer, though. Uh, anyway. Now we can talk about news. Yeah. Like, for example, Analog Pocket. I'm shocked. It is shipping. It's for real this time. I got the email, too. Wow. <laughs> I got two of them for some reason. But they were the exact same email. I hope analog you got two computers. Analog Pockets because I uh, didn't get one. Nope, just got the one. <laughs> analog Pocket pre-orders will begin shipping on December 13th. An email has been sent to everyone who has pre-ordered... Uh, due to unprecedented unprecedented shipping congestion, your order will ship and be delivered between December 14th and December 30th. Uh, two points. One, we understand that some of you will be away during the holiday season and would prefer uh, delivery in the new year. With this in mind, we are offering to hold your package <laughs> over the holiday period and start shipping on January 3rd. If you cannot accept delivery between December 14th and 30th, you should request a hold on your order. Uh, two, please reply to the email sent to your contact, sent to you or contact uh, support at analog.co to change your address, request a hold or cancel your order. Please provide a complete and accurate address. The final date for any changes to your order is November 28th. After this date, we cannot accept any changes to your order as we begin the fulfillment process. If you do not need to change your shipping address or request a hold on your order, please do not reply to the email. Uh, we will ship in December. You should ship it to me. Should I? Or could yes. that uh, cause even further delays? Never mind. You're right. Don't do anything. Because <laughs> how hard is it? Because look, you, you can't don't open it. it. I, I have to I get won't. it from you. As soon as I get it. Mm-hmm. I will find a way to get it to you immediately. Okay. We will we will work that oh. out because we'll, uh, yes. hopefully it comes in December. That would be incredible. That would make for a great video. Uh, so yeah. we had uh, the analog was already delayed. This was yes. uh, it got delayed how many times? Like three times. It got delayed at least two times. Yeah. Um then we had the play date console also got delayed and the steam yeah. deck which is supposed to come out yes. in december got delayed uh lots of supply chain issues so i was a little worried about analog but they're saying they're shipping so i I'm mean excited I, I wasn't worried because like this is a this is a company that has shipped products before they, they like this isn't their first rodeo I think the problem is they're they're a much smaller company than Valve, so you know they got caught off guard by all of this, and they got hit, you know, understandably pretty hard by all the issues. So, it, I mean, it seems like they're doing everything they can to get this out the door as soon as possible, you know, at an affordable price. A, a lot. Some people might be confused. Maybe you don't know what the analog pocket is. Yeah. It's uh analog makes uh kind of like boutique uh, uh uh retro consoles or like like yeah. r- remakes of retro consoles. Uh and they uh it's it's hardware emulation so it's like the real deal. It's like the it's fucking awesome. But yeah, it's as close li- to 
authentic as you can get. And they're very nice. Uh, they're like the Apple of retro hardware. Uh, yes. But they're also pretty pricey. They are making what is essentially a Game Boy, but it could also play a lot of other stuff too. And it is yeah. very pretty. Yeah. Uh, it's got a 1440p screen as if you needed that. Or, you know, 1440 uh, almost squared. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's very nice. And uh, I cannot wait for this thing. It's going to be really, really cool. This is going to be the best yeah. way you can play a Game Boy game. If it's everything that they're promising. Uh, yeah. And I have every reason to believe them because everything they made before this has been great, although yeah. expensive. Some people yeah. <laughs> have a problem with how expensive it is. Well, um, I think you got to remember because like these are specialty items for a very specific kind of collector. Mm-hmm. Like these are people who like care about things like accuracy and you know authentication and working properly. You know something like you know what Hyperkin. You know, those are more for like you know just the co- the common folk. <laughs> Like just want to play their games with no, with no rigmarole, you know. This is for like the super serious video game collector. I'll be honest. Uh, playing through an emulator, you're like ninety percent of the way there. Like it's, it's yeah, perfectly fine. Um, but this is a whole different experience. It, it's it's uh yeah. If if you're if you're fanatical about emulation and that sort of stuff, this is a this is gonna be a really fun little device. That reminds me, I had to f- update the firmware on my Mega SG. Uh, I got a but 404 that's... error on this Kotaku article. Really? I think I may have found why. I found why. It had the... Oh, I don't know what happened. Anyway, uh, next up, we have this. In a twist, Nintendo is actually supporting Smash Brothers. Uh, Sma- That's a weird article. Nintendo is supporting Thanks. Smash Brothers esports in general, and not just yeah. their own weird Smash Brothers esports. This is the legit Smash Brothers esports. Yes. And that includes Smash Brothers Melee and Ultimate. After years of neglect and in some cases outright hostility, Nintendo has finally admitted. Uh, that competitive Smash Brothers Melee exists. On Thursday, Nintendo announced a series of all-new tournaments for the 20-year-old GameCube game. Uh, they will be part of an official Smash Brothers Championship series kicking off in 2022 that will also feature the latest game in the series on Switch, Super Smash Brothers Ultimate. Mm-hmm. Uh, while the events will be licensed and backed by Nintendo, esports organization Panda Global will be the one running this new North American Championship circuit. Players will first complete in online qualifying rounds, followed by in-person qualifiers once large-scale events return. Uh, winners will be invited to the Grand Finals later in the year. Uh, details like scheduling rules and prize pools, long a touchy subject for Nintendo are still up in the air. And obviously any live events, uh, will have to be grappled with the ongoing pandemic smash brothers, ultimate online netcode being what it is. Hopefully Nintendo and Panda global are able to figure out, uh, figure that out sooner rather than later smash brothers melee. Meanwhile, isn't even available on modern platforms. So go call up your childhood neighbor if you want to train for the event. Perhaps a buddy still has their old GameCube. So, yeah, all, players will compete in online qualifying rounds. I assume that they're talking yeah. about Ultimate. Yes. <laughs> Nintendo has supported Melee in a weird way. To a point, yeah. And they did some weird sort of online qualifying rounds for Melee, yeah. but they had to like verify that they own the game or so. They, they did a weird thing because you can't obviously you can't just play Smash Bros. online. You have to run it through Slippy, which is like a you're emulating yeah. it basically. So I don't. I'm very curious how that's gonna go. How the hell they're gonna do that? If they're even gonna do that for for Melee, they have to do something. Yeah. I, I'm very curious how Melee is gonna go. Maybe we'll find out that they're doing all of this because they have plans to release melee on the switch. Maybe. I mean, we, that would be very interesting. Um, um, we have rumors that they're going to have, uh, we have, we have rumors that seem legit that there will be smash 64 on the switch. I believe right. in that. 
uh, Melee would be crazy. Yeah. But anyway, Nintendo tweeted, uh, they quote tweeted Panda Global. Panda Global said, we are proud to announce our partnership with Nintendo America in 2022. Panda will bring the first officially licensed circuit of Smash Brothers Ultimate and Smash Brothers Melee to North America. More details for the short series of events with cash prizes coming later. And then Nintendo quote tweeted it and said, confirmed. Ready your A game. Super Smash Brothers competitors. We've uh, partnered with Panda Global to launch the first officially licensed Super Smash Brothers championship circuit in North America coming 2022. Panda Global, if you didn't know, they're like an esports organization that that's they're one of the most well known uh Smash Brothers esports organizations. Mm-hmm. Uh so they're pretty legit. And I think if they're involved, we're gonna have some good rule sets and stuff for uh for competitive Smash Brothers. That's that's one major concern with Nintendo getting involved with Smash Brothers esports, is that they like to have items on and stuff. And yeah competitive smash players want to be able to play the game how they've been playing it for years so mm-hmm. uh so that's a big deal uh for everyone that doesn't realize how big of a deal this is this is coming from panda global nintendo al- nintendo along with finally nintendo along with finally providing prize pools has just acknowledged the existence of competitive melee for the first time in years and shows choosing to embrace it oh this was hungry box who was saying that one of the best melee players ever. Uh, he tweeted today. So yes, that is true. Uh, there's a lot of... I mean, Smash Esports is very popular, and there's a lot of very popular players in it, especially the melee people. The, the melee people are probably yeah. the most uh, recognizable. They're like the big faces of Smash Esports. And uh, Nintendo doesn't give to the prize pools. They don't support these... these uh, yeah these uh, the events so you'll have games like brawl holla with like literally a million dollar prize pool and then you'll have smash yeah. brothers at evo the biggest fighting game tournament in the world and the prize yeah. pool is like twenty thousand dollars yeah it's like really sad it's sad to see that but anyway hopefully it'll be a lot more money now for these people uh prize pools doesn't necessarily just mean that guys at the top either it could like if you get in like 10th place you might still get like a huge sum of money if if nintendo wants to throw some bucks at this um but yeah i think this will i think it'll be interesting and i think it'll get a lot more eyes on on these smash brothers esports in general yeah i've always said that i think smash brothers has potential to be the biggest esport because uh it's so easy to wrap your head around because it's it's a fighting game so there's only two yeah. characters on the screen, and everybody's played Smash Brothers before. Well, it's a it's a fighting game, but it's also a lot easier, I think, to get into than like a Street Fighter or you know something like that because those games are much more technical. I'm mean, not to say that Smash isn't technical, but I think the the general idea of it is a lot easier for a lot of like new players to comprehend. It's it's more outwardly new player friendly than the other games are so it it it, of course it gets technical um Mm -hmm. but from a viewer's standpoint it's easy to to just to just pick it up and watch it and you can like pretty much understand everything that's happening Uh, there might be some like some like terms that they use that that get technical and are hard to understand yeah um but in the grand scheme of things, like it's much easier to watch a competitive Smash Brothers uh, match than it is to watch a competitive StarCraft match. <laughs> yeah. Or even like Call of Duty or Valorant or anything. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. I, 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 I think this is, a, this is a big win for everybody. Also, yeah, a little side note for this Panda Global also announced they're making a controller. And I have what? a lot of questions about this. So well, this isn't the first yeah. thing that they've made. They've made a dock that has GameCube inputs on it. Okay. This is a Kickstarter now for a GameCube-styled controller. It looks like a WaveBird situation. It's probably wireless. Mm-hmm. The Kickstarter starts tomorrow. We know nothing else about this thing. <laughs> I have lots of questions. My first question is like competitive players 
don't like to stray away from the thing they've been using. You know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Why are they going to drop the traditional GameCube controller for this? Well, I think they're... I mean, obviously, this is shaped very similar to a GameCube controller. Mm -hmm. Um, So they're trying to replicate that feel. Uh, I think the important thing you have to remember is that GameCube controllers are 20 years old at this point. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people have probably been using the same controllers for 20 years. At the rate they play Melee, like that thing's got to be breaking down. It's got to be falling apart. No, they go through I mean, them this... like crazy. I, I yeah. saw uh, Mewtwo King has a video where he goes through all of the GameCube controllers he has, and he has like 20 controllers. I remember reading an article like a couple of years ago that like this has been an ongoing problem trying to make sure that uh, competitive Smash players have working GameCube controllers. And yeah, Nintendo released their own like for ultimate and stuff, but even those are hard to come by. Right. And those are the as close as you can get to original hardware. I'm also curious, like Panda global just partnered with Nintendo. Yeah. Is this going to be officially licensed? And if it's not, isn't that a little, isn't that going to be a little sketch for Nintendo? Oh yeah. Working with a company that is making an unofficial controller for their system. Oh, I feel like it's got to be because I mean, what's the well, who makes the GameCube controllers now? Uh, PDP? Power A, uh, Power, Power A, A, PDP, uh, Hori, they all make controllers. Yeah, so I mean, well, those are all officially licensed. Yeah, that's what so I'm I saying. Imagine they have to also be officially licensed if they want to use that shape. I would be a little surprised if it was officially licensed. Yeah. But, uh, I mean, I, w- I was surprised Nintendo was doing the the, the, the their partnering with Panda Global at all anyway. So, yeah. Uh, and again, Panda Global made a fucking dock. <laughs> <laughs> Nintendo doesn't even like that. It's not really a dock. It's like a it's a it's a tabletop mode situation. So it doesn't actually like, you know, output to a TV or anything. So it's it not. Does. As, it does. It does. I'm, I'm looking at the page now. Yeah. says it supports TV play. Connects to Switch dock with uh, included USB-C cable. Ultimate GameCube adapter? Yes. TV play connects to the Switch dock with uh, include No, to the Switch dock. You have to... It passes oh. through to the Switch dock. It doesn't oh, okay. actually yeah. out, but you need a dock as well as this. Never mind. <laughs> um... So yeah, this isn't gonna like fuck up your switch like a normal aftermarket right. dock would, um, or might or may. Yeah. Uh. So anyway. Uh, weird. I have a lot of questions. We'll find out tomorrow, I guess. Yeah. Uh, and I guess I'll probably be making a video on this thing too. Uh. Anyway, we got three thirty-eight whole months. From Ray Zeffler, wow. who says, "Love the stream so far, boyos." Also, is the is the GameCube is the controller Panda said is hold on. Also, is this the controller Panda said is being put on delay for 2021 from last year? I have no idea. I've never heard of this controller before in my life. No, that's not true. I, I think- did know they were working on a controller. They said something about that, so maybe you're right. They've been, this thing has been in development for a really long time. Anyway. Uh, this person has been asking this question a thousand times in the chat. Hey, Bob, I have a quick question about the OLED switch. Oh, do you do you you mean this one? Don't ignore the clothes <laughs> pile. Ignore the clothes pile. I haven't put away yet. Uh, you mean this one right here? Uh, how's the testing going? You checked for burn-in results against white screens? Love those? Yeah, yes. Uh, it's, it hasn't burned in yet. Uh, I will let you know when it burns in. I'll have a video on it. It's going to be a really long time. So I, it's one of the most frequent questions I get because people are very concerned about it. Uh, it's going to be fucking forever until that thing burns in. I have seen no signs of burning whatsoever. I can't wait till it burns in. So I can freaking not have it here anymore. It's so bright when I'm trying to sleep. <laughs> anyway, in the wild, thanks for the 100 bits and for subscribing. I appreciate it. Let's talk about Reggie. Good old Reggie. 
or used to be good old Reggie. Now we know he's a Judas. Or is that uh, Reggie fils may admits he bought a an Xbox over a GameCube as he hosts the 20th anniversary panel. Is that what you mean, like a like a backstabber? Yes. I thought you were being anti-Semitic for a second. <laughs> thought we were going to have problems here. Nope. Uh, learn your history. Reggie fils may <laughs> has done all sorts of things since he retired as, as the role of Nintendo of America's president in 2019, and his latest temporary gig is well worth watching if you love learning about the history of the video game industry. The man who made a name for himself during the Nintendo's DS and Wii generation uh, has been given the job of moderating, or should we say hosting, the 20th anniversary Xbox panel focused on the past, present, and future. Oh, yeah. The panel itself includes... <clears throat> Include stories from Reggie's industry friends and competitors, Robbie Bach, Peter Moore, Bonnie Ross, and Ed Fries. Uh, as we as we commemorate the 20th anniversary of Xbox, we look back at how passionate a group of Microsoft uh, renegades used their creativity and innovation to push traditional boundaries of gaming and establish Xbox as a dominant player in the industry. These industry tailblazers share their personal stories and experiences, reminiscing on the past and looking forward to what the future holds. The discussion is moderated by former Nintendo of America president and COO Reggie fils -Aimé. That's a sentence you never thought you'd hear. <laughs> Reggie even shared some of his own history with the brand and praised the Xbox team for their efforts over the past 20 years, noting how the industry is better because of Xbox's launch. Here are a few of his words, uh, courtesy of Sister Side Pure Xbox. When the Xbox launched, this is Reggie talking. When the Xbox launched, I was not in the industry. I was a consumer, and I was a prototypical consumer that had a PS2 in my house, and I had an N64, and I was thinking about a GameCube, but I actually bought... I actually didn't buy a GameCube until I was part of Nintendo. My son, an avid gamer, was the one saying we needed to check out this Xbox thing, and the driver was Halo, and that experience was what the original Xbox was what brought the original Xbox into my house with that big old controller. That is my Xbox memory from the very beginning. The moment in time of the launch, the moment in time now, 20 years later, the industry is better because of the Xbox launch. I passionately believe that. And the fact that we are all uh, the fact that there are all these companies making all of these wonderful content, the ecosystem is so robust. The Xbox is a big part of that. Uh, so this, I, I can't wait to watch this. It is, uh, yeah. 47 minutes long. Oh, Reggie talking to Xbox people. Uh, yeah. I, so he came to the Nintendo, he came to Nintendo before the DS launch, right? He came in during the GameCube era. Yeah, but it wasn't his big reveal, like, his big first reveal, wasn't it the DS? Where he said he's gonna kick everybody's asses? That was the year before, I think. The year before what? The D the DS? Year yeah. So why was he going to kick everybody's ass? Because he was the new guy at Nintendo and they wanted him to make a splash. So he came out and he's like, I'm about kicking ass and taking names. Oh. So. But it, it was like, I think it was a year before the DS launched. Or a year before the reveal. Mm, okay. Yeah. Well, anyway, this is on uh, the Microsoft Alumni Network YouTube, and it only has 504 <laughs> subscribers. We talked about it, this last time. I don't know how much yeah. it went up by then, but it didn't go up by much at all. No, I, this is, I, I know like this is definitely something that Microsoft made just for people who used to work for them. Like this is not, this is not intended to be like a commercial YouTube channel, uh, like Wolf Den or something like that. This is just supposed to be for former Microsoft employees. Um, but I guarantee you that's probably the most watched video on so this I just, channel. I just sorted by most popular. Yeah. And it says the most popular video has 2,000 views. But that one has 25,000. That's weird. It's very strange. Anyway, I added it to my watch later. I'm going to watch that one of these days or listen there to it. Go. Yeah. Uh, it looks like a fun time. What a big production they have. Yeah. Anyway, uh, we have more news to plow through while we're at it. Yeah. Uh, Sony has put a patent on their face plates, which we knew they were going to do. Oh, wait, this is the face plate. This is different than the side panels. 
No, this is the side panels. Then why don't they say it's a patent on the side panels? Because I guess now they're officially called faceplates. Uh, Sony has filed a patent for its <laughs> PS5 faceplates. The design patent was originally filed a week before the PS5's November launch last year, and it was subsequently published in the U.S. Patent and Trademark Office on November 16th. It has fueled speculation that Sony will create its own faceplates or skins. Design so, patent so, so spotted this, by... This explains Sorry. why dbrand backed off. <laughs> and this is, you're right, it's the side panels. It's I'm on the patent yeah. right now. It's a picture of the side panels. Yeah. Uh... Third parties have attempted to fill a black faceplate void, but Sony has threatened legal action. A small company uh, first named Plate Station 5 and then Customize mm -hmm. My Plates was forced to cancel and refund orders for black PS5 faceplates last year following legal action from Sony. Customize My Plates returned earlier this year and is still selling custom plates. Uh, that didn't stop dbrand from selling their own matte black faceplates and even daring Sony to sue. Sony eventually threatened Deep Brian with legal action, forcing the company to pull its faceplates and replace them with a new design and marketing campaign that mocks Sony's team of lawyers. And the new design, not great. Don't like it. I mean, the current design is not great. True. Good point. The current PlayStation 5 design is not great. <laughs> just make it a square. Just make it, just make my console square. It doesn't need to be fancy. Yeah. Anyway, uh, that so that explains everything. That, yeah, they made a patent yep. on the faceplates. Uh, I it hope they don't sell them for too to much money. It would be great if they just released the PlayStation Five in black. Yeah, I mean, like releasing the faceplates, I think would be a good alternative. Re release the fucking thing in black. And then also release faceplates for people who already bought the white one. Just slap black faceplates yeah. on it. That sounds awesome. I'm down for that. Mm -hmm. uh, or that red color that the controllers are. That'd be pretty cool. Yeah. Anyway, uh, plowing through news right now. Halo Composer asks fans to destroy his music. Very confused. Uh, yeah, I had to throw this in here because this is fascinating to me. Marty O'Donnell, the former audio director at Bungie who worked on Halo and Destiny for years, was forced by a court to upload a video yesterday asking folks to stop sharing and publishing video game music he uploaded online without legal permission and against court orders. In a short video, what? the composer even asks fans to destroy any copies of the music they might still have. Oh, this is 46 seconds. I'm just going to play it. Do it. Why is it not playing? Oh, I think my oh, I have I have the website muted. Uh, okay, there you go. To whom it may concern, I do not have and have not had since at least April 2014 the legal authority to possess or distribute non-commercially available material related to Destiny or Music of the Spheres, including material I composed or created while working for Bungie. This material is owned by Bungie. If you posted any of these assets on a website or other publicly available to whom platform, may cons you should remove the content immediately. If you have copies of these assets, you should refrain from sharing and destroy any copies of them. This request does not apply to any Destiny or Music of the Spheres material that you lawfully obtained from commercially available sources. Thank you. What the hell is Music of the Spheres? I don't know. You're the Destiny guy. You should know that. Uh, is that? I guess that's the their OST. Uh, yes. Uh, that's weird. This guy's got like videos of like his baby on here. <laughs> Back in 2010, three years after Bungie and Microsoft parted ways, the studio began working with Activision on a 10-year development plan to create Destiny, um, and it was decided that. Uh, by Bungie and O'Donnell that rather than create music for each planned installment of the game, O'Donnell will, would compose a large score for the entire franchise and all future games. After two years of composing alongside Michael Salvatore and former Beatle Paul McCartney, they had created an eight-part uh, score called Music of the Sphere. What the hell? That's, that's what that is. I remember the Paul McCartney collaboration. That I remember. But before E3 2013, Activision decided not to use his music for Destiny's E3 2013 trailer. According to court docs 
From 2015, O'Donnell was furious about the change and directly complained to Bungie CEO Harold Ryan. The rest of Bungie management agreed that Activision overstepped and filed a formal complaint, but the publisher overruled it. O'Donnell's plans to release the project as a separate release were denied by both Bungie and Activision. This ultimately led to O'Donnell going online when the Activision scored E3 trailer premiered and tweeting that the music was not Bungie's, leading to a clash with the developer and eventually further issues between the studio and the composer, uh, and he was fired without cause on April 11th, 2014. Hold on, hold on. I'm, I'm confused. I'm okay. conf question. Yes. They didn't use his music. Correct. So he was pissed. Yes. Then the E3 trailer premiered, and he yes. tweeted that the music was not Bungie's. Correct. What does that mean? He he basically like broke the fourth wall and told people that's not the music we wanted. That's the music Activision put in there. Oh, it's not uh, Bungie's, and, it's Activision's. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And Bungie probably got mad at that because they wanted to try and keep things quiet. Right. And and he, I, he was fired eventually. I do remember him being fired. Uh, lawsuits followed. In one lawsuit, uh, which O'Donnell won, he still was ordered to return all material from Destiny and Music of the Spheres, not just the final scores, but every version, component, and variation. However, in 2019, uh, following 2018, late 2018 leaks, uh, O'Donnell began uploading music from the project. Bungie's lawyers argued this directly violated the previous injunction in May 2021, Sorry, it violated the previous injunction, and in May 2021, a judge ruled in Bungie's favor. In September of this year, O'Donnell was found in contempt of court for his continuous use of Destiny assets, including uploading song clips online long after he was fired and left Bungie in 2014. According to Eurogamer, such use of the such use violated the terms of a previous lawsuit. He was forced to pay Bungie nearly $100,000 in order to create a video explaining he did not have the authority to provide this musical material. Moreover, O'Donnell was to tell anyone who downloaded the assets to refrain from sharing them and to destroy any copies they may have. Yeah, that'll work. <laughs> now I want to listen to it. Now I want I know. That's so stupid. They, they should, what, yeah. what they should do is be like, hey, you want to release this? Let's work together on the release. Because they're the rights holders. If, they're, if the guy I wants mean, to release it, Figure it out. Be like, this was the B. This was the B sides we cut. Yeah, I mean, I feel especially now that Bungie is in complete control of Destiny again. Um, but I feel like this divorce was so sour mm. that we're not going to see that anytime soon. Uh, we all know Activision seems to be a shitty place to work. So uh, yes, <laughs> so uh, this doesn't surprise me at all. Yes. It is weird. That is a weird thing. That was a weird video to watch. Uh, this is uh, this is weird. Yeah. Uh. Anyway, Rick MSGT. Thanks for the hundred bits. I would like to know mm -hmm. your preferred capture card. Is this is it still the Elgato HD sixty S or have you found something better? Uh, HD sixty S plus. It's not my preferred. I don't have a preferred capture card. I still think the best one you can get for the price is probably the HD 60S Plus. I feel like it's fine for most people, especially because it has that HDMI pass-through, which I think is really important, and I think it's weird when people play off of the computer. Um, I I use an Elgato internal 4K, which I don't think is that great, but it's the one that I use. Uh, and I used an internal Aver Media at the studio, and I don't like... It's got some weird issues. It's not doing right by me. So... I wouldn't say it's my preferred capture card, but I think that uh, the Elgato HD 60S Plus is uh, still one of the best ones you can get right now. And it's right now, I, the mine I use for for this camera, the unboxing camera is plugged into one of those. So, um, yeah, I, I I I guess that's like the I still I would recommend it. It's my recommended uh, capture card, I guess. Anyway. I do want to get the uh, f external 4K one that you can put an SD card into. I'm interested in that. They make that? Elgato? They do make that. 
I'm upset that they nobody makes an HDMI 2.1 capture card yet. Yeah, that, that doesn't surprise me. Nobody even makes one that does pass through. You're not going to find widespread HDMI 2.1 anytime soon. But there's took no a while reason for... for it. It's it's widely available. You can just get HDMI 2.1 as easily as you can get HDMI 2.0. It was, and people are pissed at Apple for putting a 2.0 port in this stupid thing. But I understand it because this stupid new MacBook that has all this yeah. crazy specs, I keep calling it stupid. It's fucking awesome. Um, yeah. It can't do over 4K 60. Like it just can't do it. So putting the 2.0, 2.1 port in it wouldn't even make sense. Yeah. The screen on it is 4K 120, but like not really. It's a variable, right. so like it can't ex it can't display externally 4K 120. Um, at least to my knowledge, I've been trying through uh, through USB C. It doesn't work. Anyway, there's nothing wrong with Aver Media either. You can get yeah. We we had a. I was gonna say we had a. I still have it. The. Uh, the live oh. capture, mm -hmm. and that's that's a separate device that you can plug an SD card into, and it'll record gameplay to that. You don't need to connect it to a PC. Yeah, that's pretty good. I just, yeah, I had some problems with the internal version of that, but it could just be the computer I was using. Yeah, Miss Tech Zone, thank you for the two months uh, or twenty nine months. Jesus Christ, thank you very much. Am. Uh. Hey, this new game came out. You ever you ever hear about a little game called Super Smash Brothers? Oh, how you about, mean Nintendo All Stars, whatever the fuck it was? How about a little game called Nicktoons All Stars Brawl that everybody loved Nicktoons, so much Nicktoons. that came out and Nicktoons, was phenomenal, yeah. right, everybody? Yep. Uh, you believe me, right? And now there's a new one that's the same, but there. It's Warner Brothers. It's Warner Brothers. So get ready because Batman, Superman, Bugs Bunny, Arya Stark, Tom and Jerry, and other characters from Warner Brothers will battle it out in a new Super Smash Brothers inspired platform fighter called Multiverses. I hate that title. Uh, and yes, the game will include the meme born Ultra Instinct Shaggy from Scooby Doo yes. when it launches next year. Uh, WB Games and developer Player First Games hope to distinguish multiverses from similar games like Smash Brothers and uh, Nickelodeon All-Star Brawl by releasing the game as free-to-play with a team-based 2v2 format. The companies also promise full cross-play support. Uh, multiverses is coming to PS4, PS5, Windows PC, Xbox One, and Series X. And dedicated server-based rollback netcode and content-filled seasons. So, uh, they so no say switch at this time. Yeah, there's no switch, and it might have something to do with the online. Uh, but right. we're not sure. Right. Uh, I'm still very curious about that because uh, I heard Nicktoons All Stars Brawl had problems with switches online, and uh, I've always been, I've always thought that it was a development issue. Like like that Nintendo's developing their games weird, and that's why the the netcode is weird on their games. Yeah. Uh, but if companies are intentionally uh, not developing for the Switch, that's interesting. Yeah. Uh, I th and I think they the fact that they specifically called out the netcode in the reveal trailer like says a lot. Right. You know that they're like really focused on making this, you know, actually work online. And yeah, I guess if they're not putting it on Switch right away, that might be one of the reasons. So I'm cu also curious about the uh, team-based situation. Is it like going to be like uh, uh, Marvel vs. Capcom where you swap out characters? That would be really cool. I would love well, no, that in a Smash-style game. I think it's, you know, just like it is in Smash, you know, all four players on screen at once. Mm -hmm. um, and, it's, and it's not strictly team based you can do traditional one on one um you know and free for all and stuff like that but they seem to be putting a lot of focus on the 2v2 format i guess to help separate it from the other games in the genre of including uh one upping nickelodeon's crossover brawler multiverses uh will feature familiar voice actors for its cast including 
Kevin Conroy as Batman, Tara Strong as Harley Quinn, uh, Matthew Lillard as Shaggy, Maisie Williams as Arya Stark, John DiMaggio as Jake the Dog, and Daniel DeVernay as Steven Universe. Um, there's some interesting characters in this. Um, I think it looks a lot better than Nicktoons so far. Yeah. Uh, and I I think Warner Brothers just knows how to make a good game. So so yeah, Warner Brothers like no like they like they're an actual game studio. They made games before. You know the Batman series, Mortal Kombat, uh, several others. I'm forgetting. So like this is something they would. I can see them putting the time and effort and money into it and like actually do it right. The fact that they have voice actors in it at all already puts it above Nicktoons. Um, the roster makes no sense, though. <laughs> Solely because of Arya Stark. What's wrong with that? This is clearly a game for kids. And I don't know if you've seen Game of Thrones. <laughs> Okay, There's a yes. lot of like unchild friendly things in that show. <laughs> True. You're right. That's a good point. So that's just very bizarre. That means like other R rated Warner Brothers properties like Lethal Weapon or Dirty yes. Harry. We could show get a Lethal Weapon game. character in this. We get Mel Gibson himself, the character Mel, Mel Gibson. Yeah. <laughs> um so I mean, I had high hopes for Nicktoons All Star Brawl before that was released. Yeah. Um, then it came out, and it was actual trash. That game sucks. <laughs> um, I I really hope this will be a little better than that, and it looks like it's better. Um, but we won't know until it comes out. I guess it's free to play. Yeah. I'm curious about that too. But what concerns me a little bit is that this is this company's first game. It's player first games. I don't see any was, other games in there. In there, uh, it was probably this. Probably was set up. The studio was probably set up just to make this game, right? Like somebody at Warner Brothers was like, "Hey, we can make our own platform fighter. We should do that." And they're like, "All right, here's money. Go build a team that can do that." Yeah. Also, Ultra Instinct Shaggy. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they couldn't not put him in. I mean, it's really, really weird for companies with big IPs to embrace the memes around them. Oh, a hundred percent. I mean, Warner Bros. does good though. They put Big Chungus in a game. They did. They put Big Chungus in Space Jam, the new one. <laughs> so they they're embracing it. So that's good. Yeah. Um, let's plow through the rest of this. We got Phil Spencer supports emulation. Right. In the I just want to. I just want to say uh, real quick. Uh, there is Smash Brothers crossover with this game because uh, the woman who's pl voicing Wonder Woman, Abby Trot, was the singer of the Smash Brothers Ultimate theme. Mm. That's crazy. Yeah. It's colors weave into a spark spire of fire. Distant sparks called to a past still a name. Yeah, I don't her. remember the rest. Search your soul and reawaken the undying light. Anyway, Phil Spencer calls for industry-wide support of emulation to preserve video games. Every, Phil Spencer is telling you to steal games. Let's go. <laughs> Not exactly. He's basically just saying that... Uh, here, direct quote. My hope, and I think I have to present this in this way. Uh, I already agree. Go away. Uh, is an industry uh, we'd work on legal emulation that allowed modern hardware to run any within reason older executables, uh, allowing some to play any game. If we said, hey, anybody should be able to buy any game or own any game and continue to play, that seems like a great North Star for us in the industry. Basically, he's saying that he supports emulation as a way of making sure that you, the gamer, can play your old uh, Xbox games and you know, eventually your old PlayStation games so that you don't have to keep your old system around. You can upgrade to the next system without worrying about all of your games being obsolete, which right. I think is admirable. And I think you've, as you've seen with the Xbox backwards compatibility, uh, he is a man who stands by that stance. I, 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 
we've been saying this the whole release of the series of, of this of this generation this whole generation we've been saying mm -hmm. uh microsoft deserves more credit than they have right now because uh yeah i feel like most people are focusing on playstation playstation is the big console most people want right now um yeah but i truly believe that the series x and even the s are better consoles you're not going to get the same sort of uh exclusivity for the games but that's not necessarily a bad thing like microsoft yeah. is trying is making a lot of pro consumer moves that i think they should be uh uh uh, uh commended for yeah uh so so just because they don't have a lot of exclusives it doesn't mean they're doing the wrong thing it means that they're allowing other companies to use their exclusives <laughs> Right, <laughs> they're making their games more ex as accessible as possible, which is a great thing. And and the yeah. reason why I like their consoles is because they're so fucking easy to use. Everything's just there. It the 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 UI is great. Everything just updates itself. It's awesome. So yeah, uh, yeah, I think they're doing a lot of good stuff. And I think if they say that uh, we should be able to play our older games if we have them, we should listen to them. Or other companies should yeah. listen and to I've them. And I know, like, you know, we said before, emulation and whatnot, uh, well, with regards to how analog does it, because they're hardware-based emulation as opposed to, like, the cheaper models who are software-based emulation. Um, software emulation is generally inaccurate, but it's easier to implement. And for a lot of uh, older games, the reason why you can't play them is because the hardware from system to system is so different. Software emulation will be a great workaround for that, and because these are the companies who developed the original stuff anyway, they should know how to get good emulation of their previous hardware up and running on modern systems. So I think what he's getting at really is admirable, and more companies should take that to heart. Right. Uh, Expeciation in the chat says they're doing the opposite, though, because they bought Bethesda. Um, you got one. <laughs> you got one studio where PlayStation has a bunch of exclusives, but also you're going to see uh, Elder Scrolls on PC. So, yeah, like day one, because Microsoft yeah. doesn't give a shit. Yeah, you uh, might even see that on PS5. I know there was like rumor that like Elder Scrolls 6 was going to be an exclusive. And I think whatnot, they just but... said it today that it's going to be an exclusive. Yeah, but I, I don't I don't see that happening. Starfield. I yeah, that's an exclusive. I think that they're going to be timed, but uh, yeah, yeah. I I think Microsoft doesn't care about where you play their games. It's just it's just they want you to play the game, and and yeah. and them owning Bethesda isn't necessarily for you to buy their hardware. They're you you buying a Bethesda game wherever it is, even if they have it on PlayStation for whatever reason in the future. If you yeah. buy a Bethesda game, if you buy Death Loop. On PlayStation, yeah. you're still in the Microsoft ecosystem. They still got you. Yeah. So. Um. Anyway, the 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 point is, they they Microsoft wants you to play their games wherever you can play them. That's why Halo is free. Yeah. You can play it on PC. Um. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, I I I think that they're doing a a lot of a lot of good stuff and and them yeah. making their older games as available as possible they they're do they're leading the way in that they 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 have put the most work into that. Uh, I'd rather play Nintendo older Nintendo games, but Nintendo doesn't make it easy for us. Microsoft <laughs> is trying their best to make it easy for us. Yeah. Um. Anyway. Do we have any other news? Xbox launches Interactive Museum. Do we care? Uh, this was actually really cool. Did you see this? No, hurry up. All right. So basically, it's just like this cool little game type thing where you walk around in a, like, a virtual museum where it goes through the history of Xbox. Wow. And it's not oh. just like it's not just like the cool stuff. Like They actually go into like uh, the Red Ring of Death and uh, how nobody wanted the Xbox One to be a, a media center at launch. <laughs> they show... Part of the letter from like before the Xbox launch, they showed part of the letter that they sent to Nintendo asking if they'd be interested in being bought by Microsoft. And when was this? 99. Oh my God. Yeah. So like, it's actually 
really interesting. They have they have separate levels for each system. They have a separate level just for Halo. Uh, and then they have a level where if you log in with your Microsoft account, it'll actually go through your library and tell you the first game you played uh, when you're logged into Xbox Live, um, your first achievement, your rarest achievement, uh, the game you spent the most time playing, uh, and things like that. It's actually really cool. So I think if anybody who's interested, I'll drop the link in the chat. Uh, I'm interested. Definitely check it out. I want to do yeah. it right now. Uh, it is museum.xbox.com. Can I spell museum? Uh, Lou the Lunatic put it in the chat. <laughs> Do you think my most played game will be uh, Modern Warfare 2? I was shocked uh, when they showed me what my most played game was. I have to sign in. Hold on. Okay, well, well, is it going to be like a pain in the ass or will they tell me like immediately? It's making I mean, noises. so if you want to go through the whole history, you know, you start at original Xbox and go through, but like you could skip around like on the menu page. I'm um, here. Yeah. It's like you uh, just go right to like your section. I think if you click on the trophy. My Xbox Museum? Oh. Yes. Oh, it's doing a whole thing. Yeah. Oh, that's me. Oh, see, yours is different. Like you had a you have a crosshair reticule on your trophy. I had the Sea of Thieves boat for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> uh it's WASD, by the way. Yeah. Uh gamer score through the years. <laughs> don't look at that my gamer score is trash yeah i, dude, I gamer... was when the xbox one came out i really tried to get all my friends to get an xbox one because i didn't want to lose my gamer yeah. score and uh then everybody got a playstation 4 and then i had to get a playstation 4 first console yeah, played 360 one of the first games you played forza motorsport 2 baby remember i talked about this last week yeah one of the m multiplayer games you played one of the multiplayer games you played? Yeah, just so that's randomly? confusing. Yeah. Just a like, random one, one I played? played? Not the one you uh, played the most. One of the multiplayer games. First sign-on... to oh, So the one that they showed was Call of Duty Black Ops 2, by the way. Yeah. First sign-on to live November 13th, 2007. Yeah. That's... What is that? 15 years ago to the day? 14 years ago to the day? Something like that, yeah. Uh, or like to the whatever you, you figure it out. Um, <laughs> uh, first play, uh, first play, first play of most played game. Oh no, March twenty twenty. Oh, oh, is it Warzone? Oh no. Uh, might be first game per console on the Xbox Series X. It was Sonic Adventure Two. <laughs> 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 that was my first game. It's true. That's the first game I booted up. That is funny. First achievement, prison breakout. See, that this is one of the pro one of the things I didn't like. They'll tell you what your first achievement was, but they won't tell you what game it was from. That's probably a Call of Duty. Probably. Uh, first Although, rare if, achievement, taking names. If it, oh if no! It, what? My most played game is Warzone. Oh no! Do you want to know what mine was? What? Arkham City. What? Yeah. Weird. I've listed my top three most played games as Arkham City, Arkham Asylum, and Arkham Knight. <laughs> oh, so here we go. Top five most played. Wait, what? Yeah. This is in no order. It's an, oh, yeah. it's, it's an alphabetical order. What? Oh. My most played game is Modern Warfare. Uh, no, no, well, yeah. that's Warzone. It's Warzone. Yeah. Um... And then I have Modern Warfare 2, which is 360. Yeah. Black Ops 360. Battlefield 3. I don't remember playing that that much. And Red Dead Redemption. So that all that actually all checks out. Yeah. Uh well, in 2017, I must have had a rough year. I played Player Unknown's Battleground. <laughs> yeah, there are a lot of gaps in mine. Wow. That's my gamer score. Is it good, guys? Am I a real gamer? <laughs> but yeah, no, this this website is really cool. Um, you should definitely check it out. Because, again, it, you, you can see the rock in the background. I'm feeling the original Xbox. What? 
Go, uh, if you go, one of your. Oh, there he is. There he is. What, yeah. <laughs> hey, Dwayne. Him and uh, Bill Gates. Yeah. All right. That's that's enough. <laughs> That was pretty cool. Yeah, so um, if you have the time, if you want to check this out, definitely check it out. Uh, it'll give you your gamer score history on Xbox, and it'll give you the whole history of Xbox. And it, it, it's pretty neat. It's pretty, pretty neat. Real quick, Epic acquires Harmonix, and they're making them, play, they're making them do Fortnite shit. That sucks. Uh, uh, we don't have to talk about it, uh, but, okay. but the, the next... It sucks. The next thing that we have here is Star Citizen raised four hundred million dollars and still hasn't come out yet. Yeah. Uh so Star Citizen, uh a game from the creator of Wing Commander, is supposed to be a spiritual successor to Wing Commander, has raised over four hundred million dollars um via crowdfunding. Despite this, the game has not come out yet. Uh even though its crowdfunding initial crowdfunding campaign began in twenty twelve. Mm-hmm. The same year Far Cry 3 came out. Ouch. So, uh, weird. <laughs> yeah. This and I know this I mean, you could be play a big it. deal game. You could play it. No. It's just it's in beta, can. isn't it? No. It's not out at all. In any capacity. I thought it's been out. No. I'm pretty sure there is no way to actually play this game because they just keep adding features. I thought it was released in like pre alpha and they just keep like trickling out stuff. Yeah, this is the trailer they have is an alpha trailer. Right. The trailer is an alpha trailer. Yeah. Ch chat says you can play it. Um, but yeah, this game doesn't play it for this game. Th this article really makes it seem like it's not out. Every article that I've read about this makes it seem like it's not out. Despite the updates earlier this year, fan frustration around the game peaked as one Reddit user reported the company to the UK Advertising Standards Agency for a lack of transparency over its sale of concept ships for the game following the complaint, which claimed that the studio had missed its cu customers. Uh, has misled his customers by not clearly indicating that the concept ships on sale weren't actually available in the game. Whatever. Um, I thought you can play it in beta. Robert's Space Industries is that is this where you get the game? I think so. Join the universe. Play now. Download the game here. Try it now. Play Star Citizen for free now, November 19th to December 1st. But again, it's like a pre-alpha, so, but it's been in pre-alpha for like yeah. years. And, that, and, that's a, and that's like a two-week, you know, trial period, basically. Right. You, well, I mean, you pay for the game. Uh, right after that if you actually want to play it but it's barely a, it's barely a thing it's like it's clearly yeah. not finished so it might as well have not been released <laughs> right anyway that's all the news I want to yeah. very uh, just real quick I'm sorry to bother you we have to do the the week. Week. The the okay week. this is by our good buddy everybody's favorite Hideki Naga uh, Naganuma the uh the there you guy go. who did the music on uh uh the jet set radio jet set radio that, that very same uh he uh he's been making he's been a big popular guy on twitter yes. everybody loves him always got great memes this one is simply a picture of big yoshi and it just says tax fraud tax fraud and that's it. Simple, elegant, very to simple, the point. very pure. Thank you so much, Hideki. This was a great, great meme. Anyway, we're going to talk to you people real quick.
Yes. Uh, first, we will answer select comments left on last week's Wolf Den Podcast over on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Wolf Den Podcast. And of course, everybody watching at home right now, please start leaving your questions and comments because we will get to you when we were done with everybody else. Video Punks says, where's the Wolf Den exclusive game awards category? Best 2D game with 3D graphics, <laughs> aka best 2.5D game. He, lo- he fucked it up in the end. Don't bring up old shit. We're going to be here for years. Uh, Median Mountains says, Metroid is not an adventure game. You guys have a, quote, gaming channel and know little to nothing about games. <gasps> He's got us. He's got us there. And then uh, Fred, who's the guy who pulls the comments yeah. off of YouTube, left a little comment that says, <laughs> Media Mountains has 109 views between two videos and no subscribers from what I could see on his YouTube channel. In so far as I can gather... He ha- doesn't have a gaming channel either, so I'm not really sure where he gets off on telling you guys <laughs> about games or how to run a channel. I, this is this is I have this to say to anybody who doesn't like what we say about video games or thinks we don't know anything about video games or thinks we're stupid about some of our opinions about video games. There's so many content creators that talk about video games, yeah. and they all have podcasts. Go watch one of them. There's probably yeah. one that more aligns with with you, what you like about video games. We're here for the people who uh, think that Metroid uh, Dread is an adventure game. <laughs> I mean, you do. If you think about it, all video games are adventure games because you do yes. go on an adventure. That so. we we were. I'm pretty sure we were talking about how that category is fucking stupid. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. Uh, we actually kind of agree, Media Mountains. We're on the same page, okay? Uh, Bradfoot Outdoors says, This is what bugs me about the Game of the Year voting. What percentage of votes are people voting for games they have never played? Me. I did that. I did that. Yeah. <laughs> so many people will say, Oh, I heard that was good. Or, I like Sony slash Nintendo slash Xbox, so I am assuming their nominated games is best. The number of people that have played all or most of the nominated games has to be really low. I think if the data was available, you would find that an overwhelming majority would be voting for the one game they have played for the nominations or are voting based solely on internet buzz. I agree. Yes. Uh, With regards to the way the game awards works. So, yes, you can vote on what game you think should win. Uh, but apparently, uh, fan voting only accounts for like up to 20% of the overall scoring. Everything else is done by industry insiders, journalists, uh, people in games media like that. And their votes are weighted higher than the fan votes are. So there's a so committee of like, people, and, 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 yes. and I'm sure this committee has played almost all of the the games that are nominated. Yeah, they're, they're so the ones who probably like, made the nominations. Yeah, and it's not like you could. We can do a big fan campaign to get everybody to vote for Metroid Dread. Um, if the majority of the industry votes for, say, Death Loop, that'll count more than if the majority of fans vote for Dread, because th- that's the way it's weighted. Right, so, uh, I mean, award shows are dumb anyway. <laughs> mm-hmm. Like, a good game could go completely overlooked. or And a bad game yeah. can win. So, I mean, it, it's, 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 a, it's a stupid thing anyway. And a big problem with the game awards that they always get criticized for is that, especially compared to other, like, prestige award shows, this is more or less a big commercial. Mm-hmm. for not just the games of the year but games that haven't even come out yet like a big part of the game awards is the world premiere trailer that always happens like in right. between every award so yeah that's what i'm there for i'm there for the new announcements yeah. I, don't, I give two shits about the actual awards and also to count how many people are wearing a t-shirt and a blazer <laughs> uh Lula lunatic says thank you for all the mole repelling advice oh i forgot we're on this again i am a fan of setting up a giant picture of a cat like you suggested 
I think they are all gone now after using a rodent electronic repeller. I need to Google that. I don't know. I think I know what those are. I don't know why I am having all these issues. My store is at a high traffic intersection. I'm not in the middle of the woods or anything. Thanks for reading my comments. It makes my day to watch you guys react to such bizarre issues. Thank it you for keeping our us day. Updated. It makes our day to hear about the mole problems in your store. <laughs> I'm looking up uh, what the hell a rodent electronic repeller is. I think it it might involve sounds, like they send out a yes. sound wave. Yeah, that's what it is. Yeah, <laughs> this, is a little, this has a little illustration of of a little mouse running away. My God, this is gonna this probably pisses off animals. It's like 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 if yeah. you have a dog. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, now we'll be in the chat real quick. Make it good. I want to be here for like five minutes and then we got to yeah. eat. Uh, Prestige is all a lie. He made a clone of Christian Bale and David Bowie was in it. <laughs> he didn't make a clone of Christian Bale. Christian Bale had a twin. Hugh Jackman was the one who got clones made of himself thanks to David Bowie. Way to spoil the movie. If you haven't seen the Prestige by now, that's your fault. Lou the Lunatic is here. He says, thank you for the bespoke <laughs> post discount. It really helped with finding a Christmas present for my mom. I'm also wondering if your old apparel is going to come back on the store. I couldn't find the flannel shirt the other day. Thanks, guys. The flannel shirt, unfortunately, will not be coming back. That was a very limited run. I'm very sorry. Um, however, we're working on hoodies and new shirts. Ooh. So the only thing that's coming back is the hoodie. Um... Proud Prince, 100 bits. Favorite Thanksgiving meal. Love you guys. Have a great holiday. Thank you, Proud Prince. Thank you. Uh, uh, I'm not a big fan, American... honestly. I'm not a big fan of, of Thanksgiving food. Mashed potatoes. That's it. It's just a lot. The side it's... dishes are the best part. I don't like eating that much. <laughs> I mean, I like food, I... but I don't like eating that much. Like, that's too much food. I, you know what my weird thing is? I like turkey. I'll eat turkey. But for some reason, turkey on Thanksgiving, like, I can only have, like, a slice. Yeah. I can't, I, yeah. I always get can't do it. sick, like, like uh, with that type of food. Like, like, yeah. like, if I have, like, one meal in a day and it's, like, gluttonous like that and it's salty and weird, I always just feel like shit after. Oh, yeah, because there's too much. Anybody food. got any tips for that? It happens whenever I go to a wedding. I I I get I feel like I have a hangover. Sometimes yeah. when I just eat like uh like on a holiday, I feel like I have a hangover. Whenever there's something to celebrate, I'm not even eating. I'm not even drinking alcohol. I feel like I have a hangover. Yeah. My mom would sometimes make lasagna instead of turkey, and it was so much better. Says Kyle Belmont. I was that explaining sounds, to my sounds uh, wrong, but yeah. <laughs> I th my, me and my Japanese teacher, we have to like ask questions in Japanese to each other, and they're very simple questions, like, "Oh, what are you going to eat on Thanksgiving?" You know? Yeah. And I'll I'll be like, I don't know, pasta and like turkey and stuff, and like pasta is like a weird thing. Yeah, like, it's not a traditional, but it's like I mean, it's, it's like a given. It's like gotta be. It's like yeah. it's like having a salad in the beginning. Like you gotta have the you gotta have the the pre meal pasta. Um, you got to put on your stretchy pants before dinner. That helps. Sister will have Thanks, dude. <laughs> Cal Moon says, hope everyone is having a good day. Thank you very much for the 29 Thank months. You. Appreciate it. No couple cakey. I'm going to have a couple cakey, uh, right now. Probably that's oh, that. Yeah. Well, I, if you don't know what that is, that's, is cupcake. it ham? No, it's cupcake oh, in Japanese. Ham. <laughs> Um, in town of America, President Doug Bowser has responded in internally to the Wall Street Journal's report of Activision Blizzard's toxic work environment. I'm going to be honest. The main topic of this episode was Black Friday, but if it wasn't Black Friday this week, I was going to talk about Activision Blizzard the whole time. <laughs> yeah, I... There's a lot to go into with that. There's so much to go into, and it's just such a dark story. <laughs> Yeah, it sucks. And, and, it just, and like it just keeps getting worse and worse and worse. So yeah, Activision Blizzard seems to be a really terrible place to work, especially if you're a woman. 
Um, mm-hmm. And the CEO is a huge piece of shit. Uh, yes. And I'm glad that other game companies are getting involved. I think it'd be yeah. really interesting if Nintendo, because Nintendo has nothing to lose. If Nintendo yeah. was just like, no more Activision games on our platform until we, uh, until you solve this, until yeah. you, until you uh, uh, redeem yourselves. Yeah, uh, and, uh, PlayStation and Microsoft might have something to lose, but but Nintendo has nothing true. to lose. But and and I know both um, presidents of Sony and Microsoft have said something. Uh, Phil Spencer uh, has a reputation for being uh, very conscious about work environment and making sure like people are feel safe and included of uh, in gaming in general, not just at Microsoft, but gaming in general. So it would not surprise me if he took similar actions towards Activision. Maybe not like revoke them from their storefront entirely, but like refuse the next Call of Duty game to appear on Xbox until Bobby Kotick is fired. Right. Because the, the, the <laughs> I mean, it's one thing to have like allegations come out or whatever. It's yeah. another thing to have the entire board of directors stand by the person who the allegations were made against. <laughs> yeah. So he's clearly guilty. Uh, and the entire board of directors was just like, yeah, no, we're going to keep him on. Yeah, he seems he's fine. fine. Yeah. So, and he's, he's done all, he's doing all of these weird conspiracy stuff. Like, uh, like yeah, apparently he sent out the email from that woman that was like talking nice yeah. about him. Like, he sent the email out. He sent it out. It's some uh, weird, crazy corruption uh, 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 rabbit hole. He he recently said that he would consider resigning if he can't fix this. And yeah, it's like, can... motherfucker, you've you've been there for how long and you haven't been able to fix anything? It's you're literally the problem, though. Yeah. <laughs> like, how do you fix your yourself? You can't. You got to leave. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I, I'll, I'll, and I have. I have strong feelings about like boycotting stuff. Um, like a lot of people are boycotting Activision stuff, and I think that's totally yeah. fine if you feel like you 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 want to do that. Go ahead. We've been doing that for Gearbox games. We think that CEO was a piece of shit, um, yeah. and we boycotted Gearbox games because of that. I would I would have loved to have played Borderlands. <laughs> I'm honestly at this. I'm boycotting Ubisoft games partially because they're all the same, and partially because they're just as bad. Like they've had right. a lot of similar issues that they're not fixing themselves um yes activision is getting all the news right now but you know don't forget that ubisoft is also in a similar boat we're running out of game companies <laughs> yeah that's the i know that's the problem with like you know the way you know not to not to get on my like you know liberal soapbox sorry dad but <laughs> that's the problem with uh you know what's the old saying there's no ethical consumption under capitalism right like every company sucks. Every company does something that you don't agree with or that you don't like or that you find morally reprehensible. The 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 thing you have to do is you have to find what your limit is. And yeah. I think in terms of like what's going on with Activision, at least for me personally, that's my limit. Uh, so I just I just I, think yeah. I, I think that it's 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 on you. It's 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 whether you choose. Yeah, no, educate yourself. Know that these things are happening, and decide for yourself what you want to do uh, to make your purchases. Yeah. Um, I think it's wrong to uh, attack other people for for either either going for the boycott or against the boycott. Um, mm-hmm. uh, do do your own thing. Uh, uh, also, there's other people who work at these companies, and there's other people who like. Yeah, that's. It. But but pe- people do say like, even if you buy a game, you're not supporting the developers. You're still supporting this piece of shit CEO because yeah. he's going to get mo- a majority of the money. Um, yeah. So it's just a tricky situation for us because we're here to play these fucking games, and we 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 have to boycott every company. Like, come on. Yeah. <laughs> um. But anyway, yeah. A lot's going on at, at Activision. There's there you can. Look it up for yourself. There's a lot. There's a lot to talk about there. Yeah. Um. Anyway. Uh, I think we should uh, end it. Yeah. We'll end it on that sad note. Thanks for hanging out, everybody. There you go.
Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching us. Thank you for chatting with us. As always, the Wolf Den Podcast is every single Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern right here on twitch.tv slash Wolf If you can't make the show for any reason at all, we always put it up as an archive version over on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Wolf Den Podcast. So you can go and check us out over there on demand whenever you want. If you prefer to listen to us rather than watch us, you could do that as well. We're also an audio podcast on anchor.fm slash Wolf Den Podcast and your preferred podcast service of choice iTunes, Spotify, Google Play, what have you. No matter where you get this content from, though, please be sure to subscribe, rate, and review us because that helps us with placement on all of those respective platforms. Uh, everybody go watch. Jackson, he's playing uh, Mario Kart 8. Uh, go over there and go bother him. He's watching Wood. Oh, is he about to raid Wood? Did you really not? I, I, I forgot to. So, how dare you? It was a shallow! Is he talking to Wood or raiding? I don't know what's going on. Go go uh, over just, to Jackson. Check he's, it out. he's just watching Wood Let for us know some what reason. He's doing. Just put question marks in his chat. Just go yeah. into his chat and just fill it with question marks. Uh, and I will see you... It's going to be a while because I'm not streaming tomorrow because i got to make a video and... Uh, Thursday is Thanksgiving, and I'm not going to stream. Yes. Friday, I'll do a I'll do a cheeky little weekend stream one of these days. Enjoy yourselves. Be nice to everybody when you're out and about this weekend. It's the holidays. Everybody's stressed out. All right. <laughs> Goodbye. Bye.